yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome into round nine of the 2024 Moto Options Supercross Championship live here on Start Your Systems TV. I'm Kellen Brower. Andrew Wood is back in the studio. We yes, missed sir. him last week uh, for the Daytona race, but so glad to have A. Wood back with us and sweet, sweet home. Alabama, baby. Let's go racing in Alabama. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. A uh, new location, you know, on the on the stop. So looks like a pretty good racetrack too. So I'm I'm pretty excited for what we got going on tonight. I know. I feel like I feel like I got like the Talladega vibes up in me right now. Like we need to just blast country music all night long and just have a good time. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't mind it for sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's cool to see the the new spots and see kind of how they go as far too. Like I'm I'm really excited for real life. See, you know, kind of the fans that brings out and and see um yeah if it ends up being a, a permanent spot on the on the stop so yeah it'll we'll, be fun well this weekend may be a mutter but tonight it is going to be a dry race in alabama for the ninth round of moto option supercross and like you said this track is pretty gnarly for a football stadium we don't end up seeing lap times where they are here tonight we'll go ahead and pull up our qualifying times on the screen right now but uh yeah, Braden Carter fastest right now to 56.4. I mean, we just came off of Arlington and Detroit, which were in the mid 40s for lap times, and we get 56 second lap times. So I kind of like that because it's such a like a curveball. I feel like for a football stadium getting thrown at us here. Yeah, and I'm wondering. I don't know if it's a if it's football or is it soccer. You know, that gives you that bigger floor. Um, but it's cool. It'll it'll be cool to see. Um, you know, a rectangle kind of shaped track that's bigger, has some more space and see um, how that racing is. And then I wonder, you know, um, in real life, is that something they're going to kind of move towards is get, having a bigger floor plan could be better. You're not going to be in a big football stadium, but I mean, for the racing, I think it's going to benefit everyone. And I'm excited uh, to see this race here tonight, too. Yeah, so Brandon Carter looks like he has gone fastest at a 56-4 over Luke Sullivan at a 56-6. So Pretty close between the two of them, and then a ton of guys in the 57s, low 57s as well. Leclerc, Tharp, Haley, Eaglin, Shirley, Burns, Rogers, all on your screen, 57.5 or lower. So, um, yeah, like even though Carter has a 56, he's barely a second ahead of the top 10 positions, basically, which I feel like is is a little bit not what we normally see out of Carter. He normally puts kind of the, the herd on the rest of the field, and it's a little closer tonight. Yeah, it's not too big of a gap with those lap times, but even then we always kind of seem to see it come together closer towards the race um, or when the race kind of gets going. But I think it's exciting. We might see, you know, another different winner here again today. Um, and I think it's going to be great racing. If you got times that close, um, it always ends up being really good. So super excited for what we got coming tonight. So Carter fastest in the 450s. Let's look at our 250 East class. Seth Carr went fastest at a 57.8. Uh, just ahead of Austin Parlo, Max Twalik, Rasmus Balzer, Johnny Padani, all up in the mix. Uh, boy, this 250 East Championship, it's it still seems so wide open. Balzer uh, got the win last week at Daytona, but um, man, everyone's kind of mixed up. And again, we have another new fastest qualifier with Seth Carr up top, but even Partolo, his teammate right up there, all these guys finding some strong form. Yeah, it's it's super exciting to see uh, times this close to in the 250 class. Uh, this class is fun because every week it seems like you never know who's going to win. Um, it's a lot more open. So seeing a different fastest qualifier up there, we know Carr always has the speed. So going to see if he can back that up uh, once we get to these heat races. Um, Jack Mark, too, down there in 10th. But he's been someone who showed some good speed uh, the last two weeks. So going to be fun to see. And, and this class is wide open. Let's take a look at our standings in the uh, 250 East region. Well, we'll start with 450s, actually. And still, Braden Carter, he's got a massive lead, even though Braden Castellaneta picked up his first career win last week and moved up to sixth in the standings. Uh, I think really all we're down to watching here is this battle for second between Leclerc, Eaglin, Hubbard still pretty close, and then obviously Sullivan and Castellaneta hanging on tight just in case things get a little bit wild. Yeah, it's it's still fun to see. Uh, Carter's got this thing on lock, almost two point lead, but kind of seeing who's going to be the best of the rest. Um, it's still it's still an amazing feat to be top two or three uh, in a championship battle over the course of seventeen rounds. So see if Hubbard, Sullivan, Castellaneta can kind of step up and and try to challenge Leclerc and Eaglin. It's going to be yeah something to keep an eye on for the rest of the series, and it's going to be fun. 250 East standings coming off of Daytona, their third round of the series. Balls are up seven on Seth Carr. Johnny Padani, after having the red plate at Daytona, really rough week for him. 
13 back now, just ahead of Twalik and Maxime Vanderbeek. The top five riders still within one race distance of each other. But uh, I think now it's it's the midpoint of this championship. We're getting into the middle three rounds of this series, and this is really uh, do or die time for our top four or five guys in this championship. Yeah, I'm kind of my cutoff in my head looking at it is kind of that four spot, 14 points back and then a big gap to Vanderbeek. So I think you're you're going to start keeping an eye on uh, not only it'll be fun to see some different winners, but keep an eye on Balzer, Carr, Padani and Twalik and see which one of those comes out on top. And and if they can start kind of knocking off some points and, and keep and see if Balzer, you know, if he comes in with a fifth, they, they can reset and you could see a new points leader or see it really tight. Um, so going to be interesting to keep an eye on uh, this uh, points race as we get into this. Absolutely. So that is our 250 and 450 championship standings update heading into the night show. Let's go ahead and get in the server. I was not quite all the way in the server when we uh, connected. So now we get a look at this racetrack. We kind of saw it for a flash second there, but overhead shot. And I mean, the first thing that stands out about this track to me, Andrew, is going back and forth across the start straight several times. Uh, oops, I still have editor on. Whoops. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, back and forth across the start several times. We've got like diagonal lanes going across the track. This, this thing takes us all over the place, man. It, it's a, a wild racetrack for sure. Yeah, a little kind of like boomerang too, where you're sweeping on and, and kind of sweeping back towards the finish line. But I think that's a great thing that they should try to do more, um, even in the football stadiums, kind of the small floor plans is utilize the start straight every time you can go back and forth across it. The only thing that you're losing with that is is you're getting, you know, here's a wall and here's a step on, step off. There's not too much uh, action, but you could still definitely make some mistakes there and people can get a better drive into that. So uses up the floor and makes Makes, creates those longer lap times you're going to see less laps and just kind of more room but a uh, thing i like is the two long rhythm sections along uh, each far side of the track yeah the long rhythm section is very unique i'm not sure if you were able to take a look at my lap i did earlier yep. but um there's a few different options that i was noticing it looks like we're still getting uids grabbed so this first rhythm section after the finish line these whoops by the way massive this week uh it seems like the 450 guys might be able to quad over and then quad quad single or maybe quad quad five even depending on how well they get the line uh, but there's always the safe triple on off and then you can quad and then maybe even quad or triple single into the corner i mean this is a long rhythm section and a lot of options through here yeah, I saw you do two quads, quad into that 90 degree corner, but that's something you don't really see too much. Uh, once the racing kind of gets tight, you you see those guys using that inside line because you got that 90 after. So maybe we do see some different variations, you know, trying to stay low and get a, a single or double to the inside um, that will kind of uh, make it a little bit different. And it, it's fun to see the different rhythms in the long lanes. 250 class, you know, maybe not even tripling on sometimes. And, and do you go double quad onto the the next table off and then what's that leave you with a triple double or something in the corner so um this one will be fun for sure uh got it yeah tricky whoops too which i don't like when they play too much of a a part in the track but you know it at least uh maybe we'll slow those guys down a little bit so yeah they're tall peaky and not very rolled out this week so you got to get a good run through them no question about it it also goes right into a left hand 90 at the end of this rhythm so depending on what you do in that rhythm sets you up differently for how you attack this corner Certainly a lot of options, as we mentioned. We'll go over to the first corner complex right here. After this wall jump, you have to tuck to this either inside or go way outside to triple in. Uh, a couple different options through here. Very easy to go roll, double, triple, on, off, triple. But also, I think these 450 guys are going to roll out of the inside and then go triple, quad, triple through here, uh, which is mm. obviously a pretty big line. But there's a lot of different options in this one as well. And I think the 250s and 450s both will have different lines that they run in this section. Yeah, I do think we could see um, over that wall in kind of into the first corner. It's very, very tight, and I'm worried that that could get a little bit uh, too one line, um, you know, but maybe some guys are using that edge or going all the way outside, even doubling, uh, double, triple, quad double or something, uh, whatever they can do. I think it'll be fun to see if people mix it up, and if that comes into play, I would, I would hate to see it just become a hug the inside and kind of one line through there, but definitely um, have some opportunities and, and maybe Maybe we'll see some guys making mistakes because I think, especially in the 250 class, uh, we've seen them miss a lot of rhythm sections and not be consistent. So that'll be interesting to keep an eye on. The rest of the track, not too crazy. A lot of short offshoots, though. Corner speed's going to be a good one. Flat track and speed, something you got to keep an eye on. 
One thing I did want to highlight real quick is as you come back across the start straight, we already mentioned it. It's that kind of left hander into a left hand 180 degree corner. So it's, you know, the whole corner sequence is more than 180 degree turn. But this on off coming onto the start straight is really cool because there's an inside roller after it. So you could go over double uh, or you could go on off and jump the roller. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys are going to swing wide and just skip this roller and just go right hug these bales along here yep. and you might be able to set up a pass into this corner down here. Yeah, set yourself up for a better 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 angle. I feel like I would go over double to the inside if I was going to do that because I really don't see that's a very peaky roller at the end there that they'd have to launch off of and it seems like you're kind of missing that turning point. So that's something to keep an eye on too as we start to get into the heats, maybe first 250 and first 450 heat. Uh, kind of keep an eye on the lines that they're doing and see if there's something different too between the classes as well. Maybe there's something too that some veterans you know, could also... Um, you might see them once we get to the 450 class doing something differently and maybe 250 riders even change up their approach once you get to the LCQ main event, stuff like that. Yeah, that's going to be a very fun night of racing to watch. No question about it. And we're going to roll into 250 Heat 1 right here, right now as we get ready to drop the gate here in Alabama. Going to the line for 250 Heat number 1, we've got Rogan McIntosh, Matt Cromey, Austin Bear, J.R. Reyes, Christopher McPherson, Max Twalik. Jared Gummison, Jake Kazarian, Kyle Boardman, uh, Jeremy Schiabro, Daniel Mills, uh, Gustavo Nevega is in this one. Trent Adams, uh, Max Wilczek is also out here. Joey Carter, a uh, lot of names, a lot of really fast dudes in this one, as well as our current points leader and defending uh, 250 East champion Rasmus Balzer. And uh, we're finally going to get to see what this racetrack looks like and with a really talented roster of guys. Yep, I'm I'm super excited. These guys, uh, you know, they've they've brought us some great racing every time we've seen them. Uh, I think this this East Coast to me is a little bit more fun, a little more sporadic. You kind of never know what's going to happen so far. So you know, you've got obviously the guys at the front that are trying to separate themselves. But I think every time the bikes hit the track, it's it's super interesting to see who's going to come out on top. You know, who gets a good start, and it, it's just on. Uh, they're on for the week. So. Um, excited to see as we're loading in on the gate here for this t first 250 heat and some uh, some heavy hitters, some some OGs, some you know friends. So going to be fun to keep an eye on that. Another uh, topic to discuss here tonight is this is a full length start straight, one end zone to the other, really really long one to get you set up into this first corner. Doesn't seem like there's really any particular place on the gate that would uh, neither hurt nor necessarily benefit you to line up. Uh, with how long this start straight is, but I think we're going to see a couple guys from the inside getting late on those brakes and pushing wide here tonight. Yeah, something you got to keep an eye on. Uh, I think that happens too more in the 250 class. You know, their top speeds maybe not what the 450 guys are, but a little bit less experience. And you know, you get a good you get a good jump, and then you get excited and you hit the brakes too late. I think it's going to be interesting to see. You might see a lot of guys too going for those first two three four gates because it is a straight line from the inside gate it's not kind of sweeping over like you see sometimes so even if you don't get a good jump you hit the brakes you hug around the inside and uh that's gonna end up with a top five start or something there so um interesting to see how yeah, their start technique i do think there's a lot of little things about this track you keep pointing out as well that are just are gonna be fun to keep an eye on and see how they break down long rhythm sections hard whoops long start you know little offshoot sections so i'm um, gonna be Going to be interesting. Ooh, look at a little corner Ooh, cutter line. Cheeky, cheeky. Maybe a little Gafford. pixie stick. <laughs> so this is uh, the warm-up lap for 250 Heat number one. I always give these guys a lineup check just in case anybody times out like I do every single time. Mm -hmm. And make sure that everyone gets into the moto that is here and ready to race tonight. So Gafford kind of showing us a little bit of the ways around the track, trying mm. to do some tire taps and having a good time as we get ready to drop the gate here for the first race of the night. 250 heat number one is set and ready to go. We're going to re-rack them and drop the gate. Six minutes plus a lap. Top nine transfer to the main event. Everybody else heads to that dreaded last chance qualifier. At least dreaded for them, but it's a heck of a lot of fun for us when oh, they yeah. end up in that one. So here we go, folks. It's time to go racing in Alabama. Grab yourself a drink and sit back and enjoy the show. It's race night here on Start Your Systems. See that red number one played on the very inside. He went for gate number one, and he's trying to pull. Got those power wheelies off and able to get the power to the ground. 
easy hole shot for Balzer there. Yeah, Balzer sneaks through the inside and comes out with the lead. Garrett Hollenbeck trying oh. to triple on right behind him is going to come up short, and a whole lot of guys are going to go by. So Balzer now leads McIntosh second, Twalik in the three spot as we funnel through that right-handed sweeper onto the start straight, Ooh. and everyone jockeying for those early positions. It's really tight in here. And actually, a pretty clean start overall. This is a really tight freight train on the opening lap. Yeah, I like that. Really only saw one rider back there that must have gone down. Everyone else kind of uh, able to get clean. They maybe separated some on that long start straight and didn't have as much carnage as we thought we were going to see, though. Balzer with that early lead gets through those whoops cleanly. And here's our first time in this first long rhythm section. Triple on off quad and Quads quad out. into the corner. So that's oh! Oh, and yard sales from the 3. lead. 3.8 into the corner. Hanging out in the crowd. <laughs> Balzer goes down as Rogan McIntosh goes to the lead because of that mistake. Balzer going for the quad does not quite get over it. Really tough to land in that good spot and still make the corner. So Balzer tried, just couldn't quite get there. McIntosh takes full advantage, bringing Chwalik and Wilczek with them out front. Uh, yeah, I think that's something you have to keep an eye on too. Quadding into those 90 degree corners, there's so little room for error. If you over jump, you kind of have to land them perfectly so that you can make the corner after that. So maybe just backed off a little too much. The nerves of leading early got that great start. But now we see Chwalik out here um, as he's there coming closer up to this section as well, trying to put the charge on and move into this first place position. And yeah, uh, saw B Lars, I think, in chat. Yes. Oh no, Brand Erosion saying the whoops are easier than last week. I think any whoop section would be easier than last week. Those <laughs> might be some of the hardest whoops I've ever seen in Race Factory competition. Look at that. Casing up just a little bit, though. Does doesn't really know what he's doing right there does he go on off or over those guys are trying to go over double i think but the 250 is just not able to get enough oomph and mm -hmm. i think all these guys are going to tuck inside in this turn roll and then double three on off through here so twilight keeping it tidy as mcintosh continues to lead the race here on the third lap around alabama there is Twilight laying it down on the Supercross triple. So we'll check third. D Mills up into fourth with JR Reyes inside the top five. Gummison sixth. Hollenbeck seventh. Colton Heckman running in the eight ride. And Gustavo Novega just went down in ninth and hands that back over to Rasmus Balzer. And I did see a couple people mention this in chat. Balzer, new team this week, jumping over to the District Designs Honda program. So District. Losing Payson Johnson found another number one plate under their tent this week, though, as Balzer jumps over to their program. Is that allowed? I feel like you can't do that. No team hopping? Yeah, no team hopping. Not mid-season. Come <laughs> on. They do it so much. I, you got to commit. Settle in and do that. You've seen a couple guys end up with three, four teams sometimes in a season. It's like... You gotta gotta settle in, but maybe they're just trying to ride all the bikes. Who knows? Maybe he's a little better on the Honda. Does We'll see if it... Uh, you know, if he can get it together for the main event and see if that changes, maybe a new look. Who knows if he's in third or first person. Look at that. Tries Ooh. to go all the way outside. We only see two ruts already there. Uh, so not many people going out there, but he puts it down, tucks the front, just trying to be too aggressive. Yeah, and he's got to be careful because another big mistake right here will cost him a transfer spot. He's still just sitting on the bubble right now <sighs> in sick. P9 as he lays it over. We got dually hot laps as McIntosh and Demos both on 59.640 for their fastest laps of the race. Riders down coming on the start straight. That's Jared Gummison and J.R. Reyes who were down they were in the five and six spots, I believe. Now they have moved their way back to eighth and ninth as Reyes now sits on the bubble. Matt Cromie, the Chrome Dog, outside looking in, trying to close this gap down. Only a couple minutes left to go, but if there's anybody that can close it down late, it's Matt Cromie. Oh, yeah. Cromie has been in this position uh, too many times before, just been racing for so long, um, and he's got the speed to do it. He's just got to keep it together consistently. I wouldn't say go for any bit too big lines, too. In this 250 class, you're one spot out. You just got to kind of settle into what's comfortable for your pace. Don't put it down, and I think you're going to find yourself uh, getting a transfer through to the main event. Some of these uh, other guys, you know, sometimes they make a couple too many mistakes on their own part um but chromie's also been known to do that so we'll see you gotta gotta keep an eye on him and just like that Ooh, look at right down, down. And there's an easy pass so jr reyes yeah reyes hitting down. the deck after that rhythm section Ooh, hoo, hoo, gonna what? get going just in time to seat hump the triple and make it over as trent adams goes on by so chromie now into a transfer spot colton heckman just ahead of him and chromie is going to get down the inside to move into eighth now as they continue to battle it out for that final transfer spot. And this group behind him, 
closing down in a hurry. Adams and Ray is starting to push each other to get into a spot. This is currently 10th and 11th on the racetrack, but they would love to move forward as Adams got sideways in those whoops. We got a little bit wayward, but actually gained some time and is trying to close that gap down on Heckman up ahead. Yeah, Trent's pulling away from Reyes, and I didn't really foresee that because normally once you go down in a transfer position, you put the hammer down and kind of ride uh, ride the bike till the wheels fall off. So Trent Adams pulling away, though. He is moving up towards this transfer position. So going to be cool to see if he can get Heckman right here. Uh, Heckman looks like he needs to get up and go with what's happening here. Trent Adams, though, does miss this rhythm section. That's going to lose him a little bit of time. Yeah, it looks like Heckman really just trying to just bide his time and not do something stupid in this position. But there it is, a front end tuck after the Supercross triple, and Adam scoots around to go into ninth. Now Heckman in a dogfight with J.R. Ray is closing down. Alex Zellner also right behind them as they jump back onto the start straight. And this is a 10th place outside looking in, but this very easily could be a transfer spot battle before long if someone up in front of them ends up hitting the deck. So this is a tight one to watch as Reyes slides it down. Here comes Zellner with the drive and the whoops on the Cowie down the Ooh. inside. And Barking. he's going to move into 11th. He's still right there behind Heckman, who's not tripling in. And Zellner gets a twofer as he goes right into P10. And he can see Trent Adams up the road just ahead of him. Trying to close that gap Woo! down. J.R. Reyes crosses over on lines. Almost gets it done, but then gets repassed by a Zellner. Good attempt. Just didn't quite work. And now that gap seems to be tightening up to Trent Adams ahead of them. That was sick right there. J.R. Reyes showing he's got some fight in him. But, man, Zellner with the speed as he misses this rhythm section, though, he is going to lose the spot. But the speed that he had shown, I wonder what happened to him or where he'd been. You don't normally see someone with visibly so much more speed. J.R. Reyes must have missed a seat bounce there. Something happened almost over the bars uh, on that triple there. As the leader goes across the line, that's going to bring us to the white flag lap. So J.R. Reyes only has one lap left to put, this, uh, put the hammer down and get into that final transfer position. Position. Yeah, it's Trent Adams holding down this bubble spot on the final lap of the race, trying to get through the whoops clean, bouncing a little bit, but gets on top of him nicely and holds on. This battle for 10th is still hot and heavy as Zellner is all there on Reyes trying to make something happen and get himself into a position where he could challenge Trent Adams on this final lap. Reyes with the crossover line in the corner. This time it works really well, and he's closing up on Adams here with a few uh, corners left to go in this race. Going to come down to this rhythm section as they go in and out of that inside. We'll peek back out front for just a minute. Give kudos where they are deserved. Rogan McIntosh takes the heat win from Twilek, Wilczek, Balzer, Hollenbeck, Chromie, Gummison, D-Mills. Trent Adams is trying to hold on in this final transfer spot with a couple turns to go. Reyes is pushing. What is it going to happen here in this final straightaway? Yeah, Reyes is sending it right now. They're both doing the same thing. Double, double to the inside. Oh, Reyes can go, go up the inside. He's got the tighter line. Oh, and it's oh, what the hell? Absolutely <laughs> sends him over the berm. And Zellner goes to the main event because of it. Reyes had zero intention of making the corner. And instead, he's going to the LCQ. 11th, Trent Adams crosses the line in 12th. Oh my goodness, I don't know what that, that was about, but that just totally gave it to Alex Zellner instead. I, I'm at a loss for words right now. Like, what the hell are you doing, JR? You had the pass made. You... you <sighs> I don't, I don't even, I don't even know why <laughs> what are you, you doing, do that. Brother? Zellner's probably stoked, but if I'm Reyes, oh my God, like what are you doing? Trey Adams got to be freaking hu fuming right now. <laughs> so JR Reyes absolutely center punches him off the track and Zellner goes to the main event because of it. Going with D-Mills, Gummison, Chromie, Hollenbeck, Balls, or Wilczek, Chwalik, and the winner, Rogan McIntosh, getting it done in this one. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to open chat because I feel like I, there's probably some end bombs and stuff being dropped that we don't need to show. <laughs> but good Lord, J.R. Reyes, where were you going, Sunshine? I do want to see that someone who's in the server send me a... I'm going to look for a sec. I'm sorry in the moment That's is a what band. he says. Oh, okay. oh my God. Yeah. Jeez, oh my dude. All right. Yeah. What's going on with my mic? You guys keep saying they something's say going on with my mic. So I'm going to... You're shouting down the Pringles can. Uh, Figure it out. Let's see here. Try some different. Do a little test, test. One, two. Is one, two, saying. one, two. I sound like Vanoss from 2007. Why can I not Who open is that? this right now? Come on. Get out of the game. EA no, you're Sports. not coming through my mic. Talk. Or it's mute hey yours oh, and yell hey, it. Hey, hey, oh. I'm in a tunnel. Get out of my dungeon. 
Uh, let's open G Hub. <laughs> my swamp G Hub. Hey, 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 hey. Open oh, the oh, hub. Oh, 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 oh. You're good now. I don't know Vanoss, dude. I don't know Vanoss. What is that? I'm on Google right now. All right, let's see if we can see if we can dial in this Yeti. Dial it in. Yeti one ten ass down with some <clears> silver <throat> bullets. Vanoss Gaming. Uh, does this sound any better to you guys? Canadian Gaming. Any better to you guys? Does this sound any better? How about now? Does this sound better? There it is, is what people are saying. Way better. So much better. So much better. Asian Indian. Okay. We're much better now. We dialed it in. We got our correct microphone settings. So much better. Apologies. I... uh. I had to restart my computer before this started tonight because my my inputs were broken. I'm glad you came up kind of early too. Cuz you, you knew, I know. like I got to get up there. Well, I just always know that something stupid's going to happen. That's why I go upstairs early. It's normally when I pull in and knock on the door. That's when something stupid happens every time. We got a question in chat, Awood, what's the in and out order? Hit me. I do uh if I'm doing a meal, which I normally don't, but doing a meal, double double grilled onions, uh, animal fry, and a, either a Coke, if I'm feeling that, I don't drink soda that much, or a Neapolitan uh, shake. It's a, that's a good one. It's really close to mine. I do double-double, no tomato, but I leave the regular onion, and then uh, animal fries, and then I go chocolate shake. See, so I did, yeah, that's pretty, the shake is like, that's a clutch one. So for me, I'm not a pickle fan, so that's why I don't do the burger animal style, which is pretty much the same thing. It's just you get the pickles and like if i can choose if it's on the burger comes with it i'll eat it but if i have the choice not to have it like i'll just not have it um but i also did whole grilled onions for the first time recently because you can do your onions like eight different ways <laughs> and whole grilled onions they just like take the slight like slice yeah it, so and then you got just put all it on, the rings yeah. and put that down mm. it's a little more work but dude they they're they're, they're good. They're good. They're make, they make some. We, uh, they make we made like homemade in and out burgers the other night. We had like the in and out spread and then I, I cooked some burgers on the grill. Ooh, made some made some french fries in the air fryer and then put a little slice of cheese on it. Microwave didn't put the spread on top of that, dude. Oh my God. And grilled a little bit of onions on the stove. Dude. <laughs> dude. I need to do... <laughs> That's what I need to do. Once this weather stops getting so crappy, I need a grill. I, I, I love making some good burgers and cooking them how I want them and yeah just go grab some in and out spread grab some extras and just yeah that stuff is so good you can make it at home but it's just not it's too much work <laughs> chef Kellen cooking streams Wait, I don't know about that remember when your wife was gonna do start your start your stove tops hey you know what honestly it's can been a minute yell at her? it's been a minute since she's made videos but if you guys head over to start your stove tops on tiktok that's my wife and my daughter cooking up grub so check so him out quiet now i can't be in the mic well i mean i tried to turn you up I can so tell you would to scoot forward some very quiet i'm just i'm in them i'm in my mic i'm, I'm in my mic i mean i could eat it well we we can uh we can play with the settings a little bit more in the next break but uh Ooh. here we go folks it's time for 250 heat number two in alabama card is sideways revs are up and the gate is down we're off and running who gets that good start out of the middle it's a ktm looks like maxime vanderbeek on the covenant number 48 is going to push wide does he control it through the corner by a nose he's not going to get the whole shot but he'll triple in and get away from all the chaos vanderbeek nick casella getting crossed up in this first rhythm section giving it to our fastest qualifier seth carr moving up into p2 Do Please for P2 as well as these guys absolutely tossing salads in the background. Vanderbeek out front cruising and trying to pull away on the 48. Yeah, uh, sorry, speaking of in and out, I think I might get some after this because they're open till 1.30, best part about them. And it's right down the street. So I might go with you, honestly. Uh, that sounds, if you're down, I'm down. <laughs> um, I did eat a lot of the amazing pasta that your wife made, though. So I ate the rest of it, everything that was in there. Vanderbeek, though, look at them pulling away. What's I know. Gap right now, one second already on Seth Carr. That's your fastest qualifier, though. Oh, I don't know if he's pulling away, picture. though. Not pulling away, and Carr gets the over double, and now he's hounding him. 
Look at these guys sending it into the outside right there. Some electing to go inside, but man, car is on the move right now. Gets up on the wheel. Let's see what happens. This is also closing up from behind car as well. They are not getting away from the rest of the field. And now the fight for the lead is on your fastest qualifier here tonight in Birmingham, Alabama. Seth Carr moving up into second place, putting the pressure on the Belgian Maxime Vanderbeek out front. Cruising, but not cruising for long because the battle for the lead is about to heat up at the end of lap number two on to lap number three. Only a minute and a half of racing is done. We still got four and a half plus a lap to go, and it is on at the front of the field. Yeah, it is a uh, full send right now with Ooh. some guys with some speed. You saw a couple bobbles right there from our top two right there. Chousey in third trying to make a run too right up there. Look at that part low as well in the mix. Those four very, very close. Oh, and do down goes Carr. Down goes oh. Frazier as he hits the <laughs> deck. on the. He does a 3.8 as well into that corner. Just can't get it together here. And that is a bummer. I wanted to see the pressure from Seth Carr, the fastest qualifier. But guess we're going to have to see someone else do it. Vanderbeek with the lead. And I did say he was the first person who was out of the championship at 21 points back uh, from 14th. 14 points back was fourth place, so maybe I spoke too soon. If Vanderbeek can come on, knock off a couple wins, he can eliminate that gap very quickly, especially with the inconsistency we see in this class. Yeah, he must have heard you because he is looking fired up to kick off the evening here as he completes lap number three. Austin Partolo, who was our second fastest qualifier on the 52 District Designs Honda, has now moved up into the second position as he charges through on top of those whoops looking very solid there, and he's trying to close that gap down on our leader. Chelsea in third with Carr getting it up in fourth. Now Cole Betts has moved up into the top five just ahead of Cody Branson. You got Devin Johnson. Is that the old Devin Johnson from to like way, way, way back in the day? Do you remember who I'm talking about? Uh, I, I maybe, but I don't. It doesn't really ring a bell. I mean, we could UID check him once we. Let's just do it right now. Server comma. I can't it? type apparently. List players space Devin. Eight fifty six. Hell yeah! That's I think that's OG. OG Devin Johnson, man. This guy used to. I think he won a OG main Bobby event or Johnson. so in 2012. It's been a minute since I've seen this name out in the field. So, yeah, I don't know what he's doing back racing, but good to see him if that's really him with the 826 UID. Uh, but that's awesome now as he tails Jeff Cooper. You also got Liam Atkinson. Johnny Padani is right there in P10. So Atkinson in our final transfer spot for the time being. But uh, let's see what happens as we close down into the second half of this race with only about three or four laps left to go around this racetrack. Two minutes left on the clock. And let's see what Atkinson does in the whoops. He's hopping a little bit. Man, those things look so sketchy when you're just on top of them. But maybe these guys are feeling more comfortable this week. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think it's after having the hellacious whoops that were Daytona last week. I feel like maybe everyone's a little bit more comfortable here. But maybe they'll come to buy them if they start pushing a little bit too much. But who knows? Whoa, Atkinson. He just got passed. That's Padani going through into ninth yeah, down the inside on the 26. So he kind of snuck up and stole that position without us even really realizing it. He's not going to get through here very clean. Just gets the triple out. Ooh, Ooh gets up right in a fight here side by side. Oh, lays God, it down heavy. Oh, cross back over, though. Are these guys going to try to go for the block pass into this corner? No, they're going to settle in. Atkinson is in the final transfer spot. Betts, Jack Mark, and Benjamin Milchkovic are just sitting on the outside looking in. Look at this fight coming into this corner. These guys battling it out for 10th. They got to try to get up to Atkinson in ninth. And Atkinson, he wants another piece of Padani. Yeah, he's uh, charging for sure right now, man. After, after getting past, he's charging back. Wants to... Wants to keep this fight going, not rolling over, and he's got a lot of dudes behind him, so he does have to get up and go. Five guys. Oh, as we see White Wheels go down over there. <laughs> White Wheels. That's, uh, yeah, Holyhead's brother. Uh-oh, Padani, a mistake, and over top goes Atkinson, oh! crossing up, makes the pass. They're both off the track. This guy's Rejoined, and Padani gives him a shove, block pass, crossing back over, though, oh, and Padani and gets, gets hit, hit from behind, lands it, and going down is Atkinson. So moving up into eighth, I believe this is. It's seventh now. Cole Betts, Jack Mark in eighth. Alex Doyle is in ninth, and Padani picks it up in 10th just behind him. So the transfer spot battle is still <laughs> on. Going on. And Padani went down, picked it back up, still in 10th, and is trying to make his way back in. Yeah, man, this has been crazy a crazy battle early on for the transfer spot. Just so many dudes from like 8th to 15th just trying to battle to get in. 
So much action going down. Padani lucked out a lot by getting hit from behind. Uh, Atkinson just tried to push push him over the wall and, and got too close. Uh, didn't give him enough space. Front flip oh, him. Oh, Padani, Padani can't avoid it. And, he's and off Devin the bike. Johnson hits him. We got three riders down. Doyle, Padani, and Devin Johnson. And just hopping his way oh, through on the wheels. white wheels. Going <laughs> down right there. Is uh, What is happening right now? That's K-Carp, I think, or no? <laughs> oh, Who's no. that at the white wheels? <laughs> oh, no. Who we got here? This Padani, Bilchkovic is the one with the white wheels. But Milkovic. I think this is now 10th. So uh, it is... Uh, Atkinson moving up to ninth. Padani still trying to figure his way out into a transfer spot is now 11th with the white flag waving. By the way, folks, this is our round two winner in Arlington. Really on the struggle bus. Might not even make yeah. the main out of the heat race. He's, I think second or third in point or third in points, I think, behind Carr. And man, he's got to he's got to get it together. You can't can't miss a main when this championship uh, is this tight already. You cannot miss out. I'm sure he would have a great chance in the LCQ, but you got to get it together. Got to make this patch. Is it Milkovic or Milkovic? Milkovic? I don't know. There's I a feel J like in you're there. You're doing way too much. <laughs> well, I don't know if the J's silent or not, dude. I don't know. Oh no, he's got white wheels on. Those are sick, though. By the way, yeah. not as cool as all yellow, but you know. <laughs> I, if you're going to do that, I feel like oh, someone needs to send oh, those wheels oh. over to who's all white, all black, dude. Thomas Sunis. Nikki T. Nikki T. Send, Nikki T, get that pack and run those wheels for us for the rest of your career. Please. Oh, but Donnie crosses up. Inside. Not going to get it done as our winner crosses the line, Ryan Chousey, with a heat race dub. But all eyes on this transfer spot battle. Atkinson has it. He's right behind Jack Mark. But here comes White Wheels and Padani trying to mix it up. Who's going to get onto this table? Oh, Atkinson almost shorted it. Doesn't get the rhythm very clean. And this is going to get real gnarly here as we close down a couple turns to go. Jack Mark almost is holding up Atkinson and allowing Milchkovic into the battle here with one turn left to go. What's about to happen? They jump onto the start straight. Atkinson, up oh, Milchkovic doesn't quite get there as he lays it down coming onto the start straight. And Atkinson makes it through just by a nose. Milchkovic, Padani going to the LCQ, K Carp, Alex Brad. Doyle, Dalton Caudill, Devin Johnson, Joey Bradstreet, Blake Cox also there, Jack Fowler, Seth Crotty, Nick Casella, and myself in warm up mode going to the LCQ. Wow, that was a fight and a half. And Milchkovic made it close to the line, but Atkinson holds on. Yeah, man, it's it's fun to see uh, these guys when there is a battle close, kind of see that drag race. The person leading seems like they always push wide because maybe they're sending a little bit, and the person behind tries to, to kind of cut under and get that inside line, but just not able to get enough power to get close enough because you do still have to rail that corner. Um, and if you can't get side by side, uh, it's not going to work there. So I, I'm seeing a lot of interesting things too. Uh, just to keep an eye on that are fun is after the triple that you guys are seeing at the bottom of the screen right now, when they're turning right onto the going across the start straight, I see a lot of guys on the right side pushing wide. Um, but then guys on the left, they're able to cut in and keep that tighter inside line. And I feel like if it was me, I'd be trying <coughs> to land on the left side, uh, of that, uh, of that triple before going across the start, just so I can get a better drive, maybe pull up alongside someone and make the pass there. So just been cool to see these little parts of this racetrack. Normally, if you don't just have a bunch of 180 turns, the racing's not that great. But a couple of these unique corners uh, are are proving uh, proving me wrong right there and creating some fun racing stuff to keep an eye on. Yeah, that is uh, certainly true about setting up some of those passes and uh, going to be fun to see how it happens in this 450 race. Uh, quick update. Just tried to fix the microphones. Let me know uh, how I sound. Let me know how Andrew Wood sounds. Uh, he's getting a little bit closer to the microphone. We're trying to make everyone sound even keel. Even if I have to lower myself or turn A Wood up, just let me know what I need to get done. Yeah. Um, as we, louder, uh, I think. yeah, just talking louder. As we get ready to go racing 450 heat number one coming to the gate Holden Coat, Luke Sullivan, Brandon Larson, Trevor Burns, Devin Davis, Frank Jackson, Kevin Frazaka, Aaron Rockefeller, Caleb Hall, Caden Speck, Tyler Nichols, Sonny Spicer, Jack Haley, Bob Joe, Tanner Rogers. Uh, all in this one, Anthony Pachone, Blake O'Brien, just trying to get some of the names I maybe uh, missed in this one. But uh, yeah, this looks like this is actually a pretty interesting heat race because it's not necessarily got a ton of star power in it. Really good riders, but not your Carter, LeClaire, or even last week's winner, Braden Castellaneta in this one. So this is, uh, is going to be pretty interesting to see who jumps out and wins this one. Yeah, I mean, uh, different names... Um not as many names, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. Sometimes you get those, those heats 
that they're stacked. That happened at Daytona in real life this week. There was one heat, and I was like, where is everyone? But it's uh, it that just means we're going to see probably a lot of adversity in this one, or or that's not the right word. Now the thesaurus. Um, Parody? Parody? Yeah, there's a different one. I can't. It's okay. I had it come down here, but... I don't know, but it'll be, we'll see a lot of difference. Yeah, a lot of parody in here and a lot of different guys, you know, up front. Uh, but then the next one might be an all out fight to the death. So that'll be fun as well. Sonny Spicer just like wheeling into that or did something weird there going up that wall. But I don't know. These dudes are being gnarly. A lot of quick dudes. I don't want the 500 like, but it's a 450 dyno. Yeah, it's on the so 450. It's just a scan and he's a uh, Burns. Let's see. He's now? on the... Husqvarna, like Husqvarna 17. There's only like, there's, there's two Hondas. Hondas. Yeah, two Jack Hondas. Haley and Holden Coat. Jack Haley. Oh, just... wheelie to front flip, double pits to Chesty to absolutely murder Devin Davis. I think. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear the guy on the Pulp Show asking why they don't have nets running down in between all the lanes? <laughs> like, are what? Are you dumb? Like that's impossible. <laughs> I mean, it's not impossible, but it is dumb because, like, having the poles in the middle of the lane to hold the nets up, you're going to have more guys absolutely destroying themselves on the pole than they will well, just yeah, like hitting the nets. you jump a little bit sideways and you would normally land in between or something or get pushed off and now your bar is just getting stuck in a net and you're getting ganked off the bike and you die? Like <laughs> and you die? Yeah. <laughs> but did you die? All right, folks, here we go. 450 Heat, number one on the gate and ready to go in Birmingham, Alabama. Top nine of the main event. They're off and running. Great start out of uh, Tanner Rogers there on the 55 Phil Ski and Snowboard KTM. He's probably talking to Hubbard right now, and Hubbard's telling him the good hacks that he uses on the gates as Rogers hole shots this one. Burnsy in second gets crossed up, goes off the track, so Holden Coat moves forward. Tharp third, Davis fourth, and Caleb Hall rounds out our top five as everyone tries to find those early positions. Burns just got absolutely <laughs> upside down on the 500. Show us your drain plug as he gets mm. completely upside down. And uh, this is a fun little mix up here on the first lap as Rogers is going to come through and lead the opening lap here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I got this jacket. What a great opening lap here, though, by this 450 class. It seems like these guys are always, for the most part, pretty clean. Oh, oh look at that mobbing up the inside. Braden Tharp with some speed takes over that second position uh, from holding coat there. And looks like he might quad. No, he triples, still rolls to the inside. I like that line. Maybe it's not uh, worth it to quad all the way out. And just like that, Braden Tharp up in the lead. Yeah, got uh, through on the outside line. Oh, Rogers almost coming together with... Holding Coat and Coat's gonna go to the outside and try to triple in and he is going to oh. not quite get it. <laughs> oh, and he stays on two wheels somehow does not actually fall off the machine. Oh, here comes Devin Davis side by side with O'Brien. Davis almost Davis hits him and do do let's, go. let's go. That was actually side by side for once yeah, this that year. Was sick. We don't normally get those anymore, but two Cowies, one very bright and one just about normal color. Oh, yeah, almost coming cool. together. D. Davis getting crossed up by O'Brien. They're still going at it over the finish line jump, and Shoot. now they've got Kevin Ferzaka right behind them as well. Yeah, Kevin Ferzaka said, I'm here to play as well. The yeah, the, the Cowies look, the color almost looks the same, just a little bit more black on one. Oh, my eyes are tripping out over here, though. <laughs> trying to uh, spot the difference. Blake O'Brien hangs a wheel in that rhythm. It's actually going to slow up D Davis. So for Zaka right on the wheel though, Blake O'Brien able to recover, goes outside uh, that step over line and able to hold on to the position for Zaka though, does get Devin Davis. Now these guys are tight like a Twyga back here. <laughs> and this is a crazy little three, four, five battle we got going on. It feels like we've had a very close battle in every single class for Zaka hangs a wheel though too. D Davis. Uh, thought better of uh, it, yeah. just tucks in behind him He's and uh, going to figure out. Man, Frazaka is just in a cowy sandwich right now, just getting uh, pressured mm. from the behind and in front. Oh, O'Brien oh, lays yeah. it down, and Frazaka is able to sneak on by. He's up into the three spot. These guys are pretty far off the lead already as Rogers works his way through the whoops here. Oh, oh. oh what the heck just happened right there? I guess that guy was disconnecting just yeah. in time for <laughs> Rogers not to absolutely die when he hit him. Uh, but Rogers cruising out here with about a three-second advantage over Holden Coat. 
So Coat now in the two spot for Zach up to third. Oh, Davis rips the quad to the outside right there, and he is holding down a solid fourth. You got for Zaka or for Zach, uh, O'Brien in uh, fifth. Caleb Hall's up to six with Frank Jackson now in the seventh spot. Sullivan right behind that in eighth, and Caden Speck in our final transfer spot. Oh, Aaron Rockefeller going for a ride as he gets hopped over. <laughs> Sonny Spicer goes by. Now Spicer almost lays it down. Trevor Burns is there on the 500. You also got uh, Bob Joe mixing it up right there with these guys as well. And none of these guys are in a transfer spot, but they're in a heck of a fight. Yeah, look at that. Look at that Cowie going through in the quad right there. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Oh, is Burns, that... a little left tap, and then oh, lays it down in front of him. Gives oh, yeah. him the gritty right there as he Gets just showed it. him the front wheel. Gets it back to the ground right there. Who is that? That's Rockefeller on the Cowie. Sorry, I was trying to figure that out the whole time. Yeah, this battle, like a 10 through 14 battle here. These guys need to make a move. Someone's got to separate themselves from the pack. Oh, Trevor Bob going Joe. Way long. Bob Joe up the inside. Look at Burns. Oh, oh my God. God. Dude, and the Spicer just <laughs> yards it in the whoops. And Burns just ripped through them. Tries wide. to quad in. Doesn't quite get it. Going to get passed up. Does he trip or qu triple single to the outside right here? Ooh, a little double over line right there. Bob Joe. Just feeling the flow. Burns doubles across. Oh, lands on his rear tire and goes down. And Bob Joe now holding on to 10th. So Caden Speck is just ahead of these guys, still in ninth. And uh, not too big of a gap back to those guys anymore. Two and a half seconds. It was a lot bigger a couple laps ago, but Bob Joe is putting the hammer down right now. Yeah, and something to point out too as well. Uh, Braden Tharp, I think he was the one disconnected. He came in the chat, said he had some internet issues. Uh, Brandon Larson, though, having a really bad time. Anthony Piccioni, uh, Pichon, and Jack Haley also not having very good times. Guys, I would expect to be up here uh, fighting uh, or up in the transfer spot. But, yeah, Bob Joe right here. So we keep this on board. Man, I could not handle looking at a Husqvarna front fender if that was me. Those <laughs> well, I mean, just... he's this is just a default skin because I don't have his bike. Yeah, I mean, just, just the shape of it. Yeah. I, in real life, I don't think I can. But oh, they're, just, okay. uh, they're not for me. I mean, they look a little, look a little funky. Okay. Bob Joe, though, making a couple of mistakes, kind of losing touch here. He's actually he might have some. Gonna have some <clears> pressure. <throat> some pressure. Aaron Rockefeller. <laughs> Aaron Rockefeller. Ooh, let's see this triple over line. Last I time think we these saw guys can go, go quad quad right triple here. Triple quad quad. Yeah. Nailed it. As uh, Bob Joe's still just up the road. Let's go back up front and see if we got any fun going on. No, Roger's making this a snoozer out front. For Zach up to second now, just ahead of Holden Coates. So Coates made a mistake and has drifted mm. back. There's a quad, 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 and triple double by the looks of it. So it could quad single if you're feeling mm. real froggy through that section. More froggy than leap. D Davis is getting in the mix. Uh-oh, for Zaka. No, this is uh, Rogers. Our leader went down Whoa. for Zaka. Has taken over the lead, and Rogers. Picking it up from a crash, it looks like, is now slipped back to second. And then here we go with the quad quad line right through here. Does he make the pass? Holding coat to the outside. Not quite. Cuts back up underneath. Oh, doolies. And now let's see what Coat's able to get done as they cross back across the start straight. Nothing doing just yet. Two different options right here. They funnel back in line. Step on, step off. And here we go into this final turn. White flag is waving this time by for race leader Kevin Frazaka, but the battle is on for second place with Coat putting the heat on Tanner Rogers into the whoops. Oh, Coat is sending. The, I don't know what it is, but he's got something figured out with these whoops and just able to hold it 10th wide through there, make some passes. Here we go. I think we're seeing a quad sink. No, he still only goes triple-double, but doesn't really pull too big of a gap right there. Still has some... Uh, pressure behind him. Coat not really gaining too much, though, on Ferzaka. Did Ferzaka win a heat? Was it two weeks ago? Oh, oh and Ferzaka he goes, goes down. down. Hey, what curse. Come on. Front end tuck and yards it out of the lead. Kevin. So Coat takes over, but Rogers is going to quad up behind him. Oh, he almost went down, cased it. Now it's going to come down to a drag race to the flag right here. Coat trying to hold it on. A little rear end slide coming across the start straight right here. Goes for the on off. Gets it pretty clean. No, he goes down and Rogers steals it with one <laughs> turn to go. Coat absolutely warmed his arm up and threw the heat race win away. Rogers takes it ahead of Devin Davis and Coat comes across in third. For Zaka will get fourth. Caleb Hall and Luke Sullivan having a fight in the last turn. Hall's going to get it. Sullivan sixth. Jackson seventh. Rockefeller eighth. O'Brien looks like he will hold on for ninth. Whoa. He's got a plenty big enough gap. 
And that is going to be your top nine going to the main event out of this one. Bilars was on the hard charge just a couple laps ago. I saw him. He was down in 17th, which second to last place. He was the last circulating rider on the track. Passes all sorts of people, but comes up just short here. Ooh, Bob Joe by misses out as well. Caden Speck <laughs> comes up just short by 10 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, well, I hey, yeah, sneak that the in gap. there. Hey, position-wise, you... you roasted jack haley you gotta be better jack yeah well jack haley ran fastest lap of the race at a 57 I mean, 8 6, 7 him. and got 13th so he obviously has the speed but definitely not the consistency which is so yeah. rare for mr haley trevor burns has taken his 500 to the lcq along with sunny spicer and Braden tharp as we wrap up 450 heat number one it's like all these guys stayed the same and rogers despite throwing it away with a couple laps to go comes through and takes 450 heat number one there. Great ride. I mean, Rogers almost threw that thing away and was able to come back and, uh, you know, get back up in the mix. And a couple of riders going down late got a gift and, and was able to take home the dub here, feeling froggy and doing some wheelies and some tricks. Do a little under flip right here for me. Yeah. No. Nope. Got to get a got to get a shout out to my boy Jarrett Gaskew. Yeah. What's going gotta on? Got to hit him? a big old roll tide. Okay. For uh, Alabama. Everyone you know. in the chat replies, War Eagle. Roll Tide. <laughs> uh, uh, he is in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, home of, you know, country music and uh, Muscle Shoals, like Alabama. That. Muscle Shoals, two hours away from Birmingham. I'm assuming he'd be going to the race this weekend. Roll freaking Tide, though. All right. Brothers. Uh, <laughs> Want to give a shout out to number one in your hearts who subbed earlier here tonight and then Idaho Dirt Biker 8 to nine and Guterman as well as Austin oh, Crank MX uh, for subscribing. Thank you guys so much for the support and continued support of the channel here. Start Your Systems TV on Twitch. Uh, Dean Izzy in chat says, happy birthday BAC, which is Braden Castellaneta. So if it is his birthday after winning last week at Daytona, shout out to Castellaneta also having a birthday here tonight. Got a hype train rolling in is MX Prodigy 17 Resubs with a prime sub. That is the Tyler Schmitty Werben Jaeger man Jensen 2016 mm -hmm. 250 East Supercross champion, right? Do I have I, that I right? I don't know the year. I do know he won a 250 title though, but good old number 17 in your hearts. Just kidding. Number <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's top 20 is pretty good. Pretty good. Think of the top five. It's probably all your family. Top five. Probably more. Top 10 in your heart. It's probably all your family. Yeah, probably. Top so. seven. 17 is pretty damn okay, good. Okay. All right. Top 17. Uh, yeah, this heat race is stacked, though. Hubbard, Eagland, Hubbard, <laughs> Tomich, Turley, Hubbard, Shirley, Vanderkoy, Holm, Heilman, Holm, Castellaneta, Parks, LeClaire, Carter. Boy, this is going to be way is, different than the last one. <laughs> is this the most stacked heat we've ever seen? No, I think usually like a one. Usually a one. There's some ridiculous ones. But like I don't. It's not a one. It all just comes down to do they get an even or odd qualifying time? You know, it's not like the the field's really gone away in I the mean, 450 class, right? There's four single digits in this one: Carter, Leclerc, Shirley, and Lang. And then Eaglins won a race this year. Castellanetta's won a race this year. Hubbard probably should have won a race this year. I mean, it is pretty stacked. Leclerc obviously has won a race. Like, this I is, just this feel is like pretty gnarly. The who we had left over, like no offense, like you, I don't, I don't know. All Maybe, right, you don't need to call him out, but yeah, sorry. Here we so, go, I'm folks. It's kidding. time for the final heat race of the night. Four fifty heat number two is set and ready to go. This is a good one. Here we go. Ooh, it's not going to be Hubbard. I don't think he's trying to outdrag him, but he's not going to get there. Seth Shirley gets to the corner first, slides out, takes out LeClaire. Carter gets the whole shot, and Hubbard still gets the lead anyways. Shocker. He's going to go quad, quad, quad through the first rhythm section and take it over from his teammate, Brayden Carter. Yeah, he said, call me Bobby Big Lines. I'm going to hit them all right here in the first rhythm section, take this lead, but he does have that, that pressure right on his rear wheel. He's not going to let him go, that number one, that big, scary red plate. Braden Carter uh, probably not oh, going to take double. Double, double. Carter went down 
and they both dually front flip the finish line uh. jump. And that was going to be a gnarly heat raised battle. And in turn, it puts Carter oh, on the ground. And he's Carter. going down again. Gets up with the 74 ride of Nick Niles. Carter off the track. Going to get going in the whoops. But he's got a lot oh, of time to make Ryder up. Down. A lot of guys down. Shirley is taking over the lead. Did Hubbard blow it in the whoops the very next turn? Because Seth Shirley is now out front. Yeah, is uh, Shirley in that that gear is that the stuff they just released it looks a lot more rainbowy on on here than real life but that stuff is kind of crazy when he almost got the whole shot i saw two rainbows flying at me <laughs> thought i was dreaming double rainbow all the way across the sky uh, <laughs> says surely just holding on to this lead right here trying to take that rainbow and shove it down everyone's throat but he's got some competition here. Yeah, Tyron um, Tomich. We have not seen mm -hmm. the Connect Visual number 83 ride out here that much this year. But he is so fast when we do get to see him show up and race. And he is putting the heat on Shirley. He wants to try to go out and win this heat race as we head into the whoop. Shirley, a little better run than Tomich that time through. And Shirley's going quad, quad. Does he go for another quad right here? Nope, they're going triple-double at the end of this one. So not trying to go for that big line as Tomich checks up to the inside. Good little fight for the lead as we settle in early in this one. Hubbard now third. Spencer Turley up in the four spot. And LeClaire picked it up from that crash, now running in fifth, just ahead of Ethan Parks. Colby Eaglin seventh. Blakely eighth. And Castellaneta, last week's winner, Daytona, is in the final transfer spot. So who is not in a transfer spot is the one, Braden Carter, in 12th place right now. And this is going to be interesting to see if he can close it down on some of his teammates up ahead of him. Yeah, he just made a pass on Ev Move, uh, moved into 11th place, but he's still got home to go, uh, home and Castaneda to get in there. Man, most stacked heat race. Yeah, you might see some some names kind of not making it, but I I'm super surprised just Tyron Tomich uh, coming in and being like, oh, the most stacked heat race ever. Check this out. I'm gonna try to go win it <laughs> ahead of all these guys. Throwing himself in there must be feeling good on this trait racetrack here tonight and after a great start. See what happens, but. Just keep an eye on Castle and Nether right now, seeing if he makes any mistakes. Here's Adam Holm right behind him, and then Braden Carter, 58 4. He just drops uh, his best lap of the race. But I don't know how much, what everyone else is running up up in front of him. But let's see this so we got 59 5, one flat, one flat, a bunch of 59s, right. 58s for the guys way out front, and 57 9 for Shirley in the lead. Yeah, so those guys, 56 down in qualifying with 58s, uh, going to get you Ooh. second best lap of the of the race so far so not, not bad for Braden Carter he's just got to clean it up but man he already is pulling up right here right next to Castaneda and they're gonna try to make a move I would I would assume by the end of the slap well this is Adam Holm for 10th oh, that he's good. actually closing up on so Castaneda has snuck away from this battle just a little bit but sticking on board with Carter because this is critical Oof. if he doesn't make the main event that's go to the LCQ it's going to be tough pickings trying to make it out here in Birmingham. You don't want to crash early in that one as well. And we've only got about two minutes and a lap left to go as Castellaneta closes up on Chase Blakely. So several different battles kind of going on right now. And I think Castellaneta really does not want to be in the bubble spot. So he's going to try to make this pass stick on Blakely if he can. Ooh. It's still Shirley, Tomich, and Turley out front right now. But these transfer spot battles are going to be the one to watch. That's crazy. That's got to be Spencer Turley's like best finish ever, right? <laughs> I think he's gotten a top five in a 450 main before, but yeah, he's That's, riding really well here tonight. Yeah, isn't he from the from this area? I so, know home race. About him. Except for what's up, my dude? I mean, the accent suggests he's from around this area. Would be my guess. I don't know exactly where he's from, but. Yeah. Uh, Right or uh, Chase B just frame that, and that's gonna lose him a spot. And now he is on the bubble. Got to get it together <laughs> here. He's off that Benjamin Franklin right now, and gotta gotta kind of calm those nerves and start putting some lap times back down. I mean, you can't give it up. But man, when you got Braden Carter on your heels, that's probably the worst person to be in ninth place and be like, <laughs> oh, I think I got this. Oh wait, the guy who's just dominant and oh holy my. Sh what? That's uh, some pretty good whoop speed from the champ right there. Goes quad over, quad, and a quad again. Nope, these guys just electing to go with the triple-double option and yeah. then tuck into the inside. So. I think you got that power on the 450, just being able <laughs> a little to bit. get that double from the inside. But, dude, I have Braden Carter's suspension. I can't do that. In the <laughs> like, what you, what's he doing? I don't understand. By the way, change for the lead while all that was going on. T uh, Tyron Tomich took over the lead, and Shirley's now crashed twice because... 
big old gap back to Leclerc, then Seth Shirley in what is a battle for second place now. We got two laps to go this time by, so this is going to be a fun battle as well. But Tyron Thomas, you, you said it before, stacked heat race, and he just comes <laughs> he out and says, oh, I'm going to try to win this heat race. He genuinely could just about walk away and win this thing at this point. Yeah, I mean, just a, a great ride so far, you know. Oh, oh and he no. goes down. And he was and down. That's your turn for the commentator yep. curse. I feel like it lands on me 95% of the time. But I just never stop talking. Just King Yap over here. So. You blew it. You blew it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Leclerc, though. And there was also, I think, Shirley was off the track, too. He, like, re-entered from the side or so something happened. I don't know. You see what Leclerc just busted out? Inside roll 343. No in that way. rhythm section. So Leclerc finding some Bobby big lines himself as well. And the white flag is going to come out this time by for Leclerc. Shirley still in the two spot. Then Tomich back to third. Hubbard fourth. Turley now in fifth with Eaglin sixth. Ethan Parks in seventh. Carter has slipped into eighth around his teammate Castellaneta, who puts the 22 machine back on the bubble. And Blakely's still hanging out just in case things get chaotic on this final lap, trying to make it into the main event. So what is going to happen as Leclerc leads us around one lap to go? Yeah, ooh, cutting corners, Leclerc. Got to get that front axle a little bit over. Man, Leclerc, though, just kind of came in. He's just... I don't know. It was just kind of there, this heat, you know, and just slowly kind of worked his way up, uh, took advantage of other people's mistakes. Um, is there a is there a step on off? I think it's in that first rhythm section. It looked like you could probably triple off of it. I just don't know. There's nothing really that sets you up well for that because to you, get onto there. Because I yeah. saw you hit it and I saw a huge lip and I was like, I feel like they can easily triple yeah. step off. But All right, you know. Leclerc brings it home in 450 heat number two. The fast Frenchman takes it. In Alabama, Shirley finishes up in second. Tomich third. Hubbard crosses the line fourth. Turley gets passed at the flag by Eaglin. He ends up in sixth. Castlin at a seventh. Blakely eighth. Holm ninth. Carter might miss out. Holm has got the position as they come into the final turn. And this is going to send the number one machine. No, it will not. Holm gives it to him. Holm lets his teammate go to the main event here in Alabama and sends the 17 machine to the LCQ. Lang, Holiak, Parks, Vanderkoy, Simos, Holt, and Briscoe, along with Heilman and Niles, will join them there. But that is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even like... Are we just numb to it at this point? I'm kind of not mad about that one. And not because like I like Braden a lot, but I, I don't know. I feel like I honestly was like, okay, yeah, cool. Go to the LCQ. He's going to just dominate. If anything, this might give us a little bit of a better LCQ to watch. You know, that's one more spot that because, you know, Holm, Holm's really good, but he's not a, a, a lock, you know, so he's definitely uh, putting himself in a scary situation there. You know, if you find yourself, especially in the last transfer position, you didn't have the greatest uh, heat race. So going to you know, have to keep an eye on it, but it's not as egregious as I feel like some things we've seen before. And it's not, you know, a points paying race. So. Yeah, it, the interesting thing to me, though, and we go back a little bit to what Seth Shirley's been kind of doing the last few weeks with racing but not trying to make it. Um, these guys are paying to race this, and I know they have a series pass, but like, uh, it's interesting to me that you pay the money to get in and then choose to not try to get in. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he he's, thinks he's going to get in. Uh I, I don't I don't know. I mean it's weird, you know, being a being a good teammate, I guess, but it's uh I don't know. Honestly, I think at this point Braden should just take two weeks off. <laughs> Give us a championship. He's Forty four points, yeah, then he'll be at fifty two. What are we at? Around nine, ten? Nine? Yeah. It's over on the screen, the screen nine. over there. Nine. So you got eight eight rounds, then we can at least see him, you know, retake the championship lead and then probably win by another you know, 26 points, still clinch it early, probably. Yeah, could be. But I don't know. Who knows? Look at that inside rail that with that rut. Triple quad. Triple. Yeah, that yes. line's really good if that you is, can do that yeah. consistently. I'm surprised kind of more people aren't doing it, but Leclerc's got those those Bobby big lines on lock. Who's Bob Joe? Uh, That's not I, his real name. No, I know He's who He's on it, JDR, like... I know who it is, but also, I don't want to say. Okay. I'm still really mad about it's Jesse Mullins. Um, no, it's not. I'm it's not I'm him. Kidding, I'm kidding. I've literally met Bob Joe in real life, so I know his name, but I'm, I'm not going to say it. I'm kidding. I don't. I don't. 
That's fine. Don't tell me later. I, I forget, probably don't I even forget. know who it is. No, actually, you know what? I know why he doesn't want to have his name out there. But I'm not I'm not gonna say why. So Witsec. No. <laughs> just making up rumors. I don't know. I just honestly the naming thing has got me more riled up than it should the last couple weeks. The first name I, I don't know. It's frustrated me. Everyone here in this okay? class is good, huh? Are you gonna be okay? I don't I don't know. See Squiddy? It's not Burkeen. Especially you, Squiddy. Oh, that one who thinks it's Burke? No, 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 no. It's not Burkeen. No, Burkeen sucks, dude. And yeah, it's it, a real person. His name's just not Bob Joe. <laughs> it's not a bot. <laughs> of course, it's a real person. <laughs> yeah, that's like it's Jay Lawrence. All right, two fifty <laughs> last chance qualifier <laughs> coming up. Four riders go to the main event. Out of this one, these are always. Arguably the best races of the night, the most fun races. We'll give them that for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know who the heck is going to go in through in this one. Padani, Navega, uh, McPherson, Caudill, Cox, Bradstreet, Schiabro, Gafford, Carter, Johnson, Boardman, Fowler, Carpenter, Reyes, Crotty, Milchkovic, Adams, Doyle, and Kazarian. I mean, it it has to be Padani. It's Championship's be, over if it's he's, not. He's the one that's got to be. He's got to be a lock. He's. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if Braden was in there, he's got to be. You're not top three in your championship, and you can't afford to miss out to miss out on the main event. And if you do, yeah, your season's done. Hang it up, hit the showers. I, I I've got a good feeling about Cottle uh, and Devin Johnson. You know, let's see one of those. Trent Adams though, Austin Berry. You know, they're going to be up there. Great starters too. Always find themselves in the mix. In the mix. <sighs> Who's your favorite sim racer of all time? Three, two, one. Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Leclerc. He does race high racing, so it's a sim racing game. <sighs> MX Simulator. MX Simulator? Mm -hmm. Nathan Zaworski. I know. You just can't beat YZ MXer. No, I mean, you really can't sleep on him. He'll sleep on you. He will. Every night. That's he'll true. Sleep on if you. you're a desk chair, he'll <laughs> definitely sleep on you every <laughs> single night. No question about that. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go, folks. It's time for the <laughs> this might be the hardest time I've ever laughed. <laughs> <laughs> here lcq time in alabama and it is go time four riders to the main event we're off and running who's gonna get that whole shit into turn one padani up the inside has got a great start let's see if he holds it down the inside oh not gonna get the whole shot it's kazarian with the early lead padani settles into about third position as Kazarian leads, here comes my daughter. She wants to talk on the microphone. What do you got to say to the Holly people? Holly Brower got the whole shot. Want to come here and talk? Oh, we got. Wow, wow that's, awesome. that's a, a dirt bike going through about 97 whoops right there. <laughs> Shout out to my daughter for coming in and giving us the real analysis. As, oh, Skiarbro does a 360 and <laughs> takes out Padani in the process. How did he land that? That was crazy. Uh, Adams is now into it. the race lead. We got Skiarbro second, Devin Johnson third, and Seth Crotty fourth. Padani <laughs> down and out for the time being. Oh, my goodness. That was wild. Uh, I I missed it too because I was I was saying goodbye to your to your lovely wife and child there, and then <laughs> you got people just I saw some pirouetting going on and people riding away, but and Padotti down early. That's not going to be a good sign. What P did he drop back uh, to? 10? He went back to tenth. Wow, Padotti. These guys are no slacks up here. He's got a lot of heavy hitters to move through. This is a pretty stack 250. Look at that. Trying to trying cut to get up Jack the inside. Fowler. Gives oh, him a nudge and then goes down. See, I, I hate that. Like, why do you hang on their hip? Like, either go for the pass or don't. You're not. You're also not 
Like you don't have that pass made. If your front wheel's hitting him behind the legs, like you're done. I know you just got oh, four dudes right there. Oh, and he just went up to seven. That was pretty sick. Kind of that yep. And oh! then, oh, went for the quad on, cased it. Is he still going to hold on to seventh? These guys might get down the inside and make a pass. Whoa, jumping over top of him. That's Joey Carter right there. Dr. Do racing in the flesh. Moving up into seventh on the 444 machine. Talk about some other live streams other than what we got going on. You got to check out the Dr. Duke crew over there. See what they're doing. And Joey Carter's been trying to put it in the main events. And now he's holding off Johnny Padani here in the seventh spot. Padani's got some serious work oh, to do. And now he he's down again. It might be game over there. He and he's out of here. Yep, he's out. And that's a championship over if I've ever seen one. What a bummer for Johnny P, the Tsunami. Man, Trent Adams, though, who, who who called it? I said Trent Adams. I yeah. said he was going to be there. He's Solid pick. Be up there. Austin Bear, not up here, though. He was my other pick. But Trent Adams, man, look at him leading the way right over Squiddy and Devin Johnson after a great heat race. Just barely missed out. He's showing the OGs still got it. Uh, he's probably one of the oldest sim racers that is still out here racing. Probably besides, uh, you know, like D-Mills and Romy. Even, Ooh, maybe, front end tuck Trent on Adams Trent Adams. Tuck. Gives the lead up to Jeremy Schiabro. And Schiabro now out front. Devin Johnson, like you said, J.R. Reyes. This, this battle's kind of closing down, though. Jake Kazarian and Seth Crotty. Oh, Kazarian short. Not going to get the step on, step off. So Crotty able to sneak away a little bit right there. But Reyes, boy, he's been the bubble man here tonight. He provided the goods in the heat race. Now he's fourth place again. Are we going to have another punteroni here in this LCQ out of the 89? I mean, he's got it right now. He doesn't need to do it. But if something happens, he showed us he's not scared. But I think he's probably learned his heart rate, blood pressure, probably way too high right now. Just a stressful night so far. Just trying to get himself into the main event. Ooh, There's who's a rider down? down right there. That that's is gonna Devin be... Johnson went down no. in the whoops. Oh, and then that's Crotty. Crotty. Did he disconnect immediately? Yeah, what? Or what just happened? He did. Or Kazarian. That was Jake Kazarian that uh, went down. And yes, he did disconnect immediately after rave. crashing. So Skiabro, Adams, Reyes, and now Crotty is into the final transfer spot. Joey Carter is on the bubble or just outside looking in i should say trying to make this main event oh karate i thought he was going to be a little bit short right there makes it up onto the tabletop and these guys are going to check in just before time i think we've got about uh 20 seconds left on the clock right now skiabro is going to get another lap so this is going to be two to go this time by for these guys still a lot of racing left to go yeah i mean seven lap uh, lcq it's crazy i used to freak out when they were just four or five laps you know and it's uh, when these guys got to hold on for what basically is uh, longer than what a heat race used to be for the 450 class it's nerve-wracking when you're up here uh you know one one crash right now will send you out of a transfer spot even if you're squiddy leading this thing so uh just gotta kind of hit your marks and stay stay kind of on it and just try to stay smooth but man just uh yeah, he, he smoked that pack, as you see right there, and he's smoking this LCQ field. Man, man, there's a pretty good gap, but there's looks like a battle for there fourth is. right here. There is. J.R. Reyes and Joey Carter about to go at it for the fourth and final transfer spot. Carter has inched up behind him, and this is going to be so good right here because Reyes is not shy about being aggressive, as we saw in the heat race. Joey Carter has never made a 250 main event in his career. But we're about to find out which of these gentlemen is going to the main event. White flag is in the air for our leaders. Carter's got a, a line around the outside, not able to get the traction down just yet. Oh, slides it into the corner, but it actually powers out and holds it upright. White flag in the air. He's got to get one position, and J.R. Reyes is trying to hold on to it. Yeah, it looks like there was some sending going on, and there is with a little bit of bobble. Uh, that brings them right back together here. Both of them getting that triple on, triple quad. And let's see what's going on. Oh, oh over the front. Oh, and gets, he gets into, into him. him. Oh, and Jerry Reyes, did he he's land that? Stays, no, he's, he's down. down. So well, Reyes goes down. Carter, Carter stays, stays up. up. And Reyes is going to pick it up. He's the only guy that's even close. So now Carter's got to try to hang on for a couple more corners, and he should be good to go. He's got a five-second advantage. So Reyes, who gave the punting in the heat race, gets another punt back in his favor, and Carter takes advantage. we got a couple turns left to go for Jeremy Schiabro out front. And here we go. Schiabro is going to go to the main event here tonight in Birmingham. Trent Adams moves across in second. Crotty will get third, 
and Joey Carter, who I misspoke earlier. He did go to the main event in Daytona, and he is going to the main event here tonight in Alabama as he qualifies through P4 out of the LCQ. Reyes, first guy out. Miljkovic also misses. Boardman, Johnson, McPherson, Nevega. We also got Gafford, Cox, Fowler, Bear, Doyle, Kazarian, Bradstreet, Carpenter, Padani, and Caudill not going to the main event here tonight. J.R. Reyes just... Is that karma? <laughs> Maybe. Kind of, I mean, you know, it's like... What a what a freaking tough night for him, though. Uh, great for Carter, though, man. He definitely got the good side of that uh, kind of battle. Where when you're going, look like you're going to step through the front and uh, you are able to save it, get into it with someone else, and still able to, to not go down, stay up on the bike, uh, and still transfer through. That's some pretty good luck right there for him. Man, a great little LCQ here, though. This 451, though, I'm assuming is going to be insane. The 451 going to be nutty, and we're going to find out whether nutty. or not Adam Holm, who Dino? gifted his position. What? You okay? You yeah. You're good over there? I just had a stroke. Just had a stroke real quick? <clears throat> yeah. I just heard the word dino over there. I was going to say so dino know. nuggies, but oh. we said nutty, and then I just I thought I'd give up. Dino, okay. nutty. Gave up. really work. All right, going to the yeah. line, 450 LCQ, Timmy Briscoe, Ethan Parks, Trevor Burns, Adam Holm, Anthony Pachone, Jack Haley, Braden Tharp, Eduardo Simos, Tyler Lang, Evan Vanderkoy, Evan Holt, Brandon Larson, Connor Holiak, Bob Joe, Caden Speck, Tyler Nichols, Sonny Spicer, and Nick Niles going to the gate. This is going to be a good one. Got to see how Trevor Burns does. Adam Holm, T-Lang, the number five machine is in this one. Tharp almost whole shot earlier on. He is also... Uh, in this one. So no shortage of talent in this LCQ, but only four spots go to the main event. Everybody else going home early here tonight, going to go get themselves some in and out like we are after this one. And uh, we'll see who ends up getting into those four final spots as we head into the main events here shortly. Yeah. Also uh, not scared to throw in a, like a three by three or four by four every once in a while if I'm really mm. hungry, but Probably not tonight because ate so much pasta, but <laughs> just like just out there. I do remember when uh, I did an eight by eight one time back when they would let you do that. And I was like 18 years old and I was like, let me eat the biggest burger I can. <laughs> and it, it's just after a point, though, it gets like too much meat. The balance is off, you know, a little bit. So you almost need them to throw in some like extra lettuce. But in and outs perfect. They'll do whatever you want. Moto Gogo letting us know that In-N-Out not available in Alabama yet. You're absolutely right. Mm. So head over to the Waffle House after this. Uh, that's where we're all Waffle meeting House. up there at the Waffle House. And uh, you guys can get whatever you want there. But uh, it's not on our tab. It's on yours. Yeah. Also, Moto Gogo, uh, someone said good Twitter follow. Uh, also, probably one of the closest with like my... Maybe besides like Jackrin with like my music tastes. Uh, All right, always post some really good songs on there if you're into, you know, like punk and metal and stuff. So shout out, uh, you know, also uh, first ever Pazuki. Yeah. You know, and he, he's he, coming. He, uh, ate, he ate my cookie. So. He is coming oh. to visit again soon. So we're, we'll maybe go get some more Pazukis with Moto Gogo. Moto Gogo, one of the four people. That have ever live streamed on Start Your Systems for these races before? Five? Five people? You, me, Moto, Hinners, and Todd Gutierrez. I think are the only five that have ever done Solo? It. Or just... Solo, yep. <clears throat> Hinners, oh yeah, OG. Old Hin Dog. Old Hin Dog. We need to get... I want to make start making some videos. Okay, here we go, folks. Who is going to make it into the main event in Alabama? Only four spots remain. Everybody else going home. Jack Haley right in the middle trying to get a good start. Who's going to go through? Let's find out. 450 LCQ off and running. Haley with a pretty good jump, but gets crossed up. And a oh, lot later. of guys down on the start straight. Four or five guys flipping. It's going to be Tharp who controls to the outside of the line in the first turn. He gets the whole shot. T-Lang moves up into the two spot. He's side by side with Bob Joe. Quadding out right there. Evan Holt as someone lawn darts into the ground. And Holtzy stays a little bit low next to Adam Holm on the triple. Bob Joe is right there as well. And that was chaos here on this first lap. But now it's settling down just a little bit. 
Yeah, look at how close these guys are racing to each other, but respecting each other. It's a great start, and that's what you want to see at the beginning of an LCQ. Not getting too aggressive too fast. These guys have been in racing and in the class for so long. They've got some great stuff. Look at Holtzy, though, with that wolf speed there. Just goes and makes that pass easily and got to hold on to it. When you have a strength like that on a track, it's, it's kind of next level. You need to uh, separate yourselves and use that to your advantage as much as possible. And Holtzy uh, goes and does it to move himself up a position. And now he's he's uh, trying to get towards the race lead so he doesn't have to worry with any about any of that action going on behind him. Yep, he still got T-Lang right behind him. A few spots back is Adam Holm. <laughs> he put in he put in his name W teammate hashtag pay raise after he gave his teammate Brayden Carter the final transfer spot in the heat race. So I like it. A good banter is right there. Solid joke as Timmy Briscoe and Brandon Larson are trying to keep it close. Uh, it looks like the plus 62 supporting B Lars. I'm assuming that's Kalana Humphrey uh, to some degree because it's the only plus 62 I know. But uh, maybe someone else can clue me in on that. So early runnings right now. Holm is holding on to this final transfer spot. Doing a pretty good job of it. But Briscoe and Bilars would like to say something about it as they close that gap down from behind. Yeah, I mean, uh, the two people I'm kind of keeping an eye on. And one of them is not. Where is he? Where's Ooh, Tharp? Here comes Briscoe. Oh, almost easily. quadded up. So this is basically, for, for me, this race, I'm kind of looking at Tharp who had some internet option or internet struggles. Um, and that kind of ruined his race and then seeing what Adam Holm can do because giving away your spot and not transferring is probably one of the worst looks uh, you could have. So um, this is a lot of pressure on Holm's shoulders right here. So he's got a lot of pressure from um, from Briscoe moving up behind him. He's showing some speed. Ooh, Briscoe got a great crossover, but elects not to go for the pass. And then Holm swings a little bit wide right there. They both go for the on-off. Briscoe a little bit of a clip and... Don't forget, B. Lars is still lurking right back there. This is really close for this final transfer spot. I thought Holm would maybe get away from this group, and it's going the complete opposite direction. They are putting the pressure on the 17 machine. Holm pretty solid through the whoops, but Briscoe's sticking right with them, staying on top of those things. Holm goes for the quad over. Let's see how these lines work out. He's going to go triple, single at the end of the rhythm section. Briscoe quads up to the Whoa. outside again. Gets it really close right there. Not able to make a pass just yet, but Alex out of the challenge and funnels in right behind him again, and the battle continues. Yeah, man, there's a lot of different lines going on here um, from these guys, which is it's cool to see uh, different things, how they kind of end up. Man, that quad towards out into that 90-degree corner was very scary. Look, another quad. Briscoe wants to be called the quad god here as we get a little bit of dually just over that uh, not as close as we would like him man adam holm though i feel like you can sense the pressure being put on him and you can see his speed looks like an increase and he's got some get up and go to him right now this is going to be a great fight as we bring it through the halfway mark of this last chance qualifier just over a minute plus a lap to go but i think just like we saw in the 250 lcq oh holm just absolutely murders uh, Evan Holt and Briscoe went down. B Lars goes through. Holm is going to pick it up still in a transfer spot, but oh, he and Briscoe. Briscoe are side by side. And now Briscoe gets the transfer spot. Holtz, he's trying to rebound. Briscoe goes for the quad, kind of cases it, jumping through the middle like a knight in shining armor comes Bob Joe to take over the transfer spot. Briscoe back up the inside, trying to get it away from him. He gets into oh. him. They both go down, and Holm stays up and gets through to get back into the final spot. What a chaotic change of positions that was yeah adam holm just like lost three spots and then gained them all back because of uh, no one knows what they're doing over here no one wants to hold on to it briscoe looked like that's the first time he's ever tried to block past someone <laughs> didn't really uh, got his bars into the body he was a little bit checked up a little bit too much there you got to practice those with your boys man adam holm though in the perfect position he wants to be but holtz looks like he wants to have something to say something to say about it after getting put on the ground. I'm wondering if Holm just had too much speed through the whoops and couldn't stop or what those kind of intentions were there. I didn't I, well, I think Holtzy was picking it up from a crash, so he wasn't going very fast anyway, mm. but yeah, he definitely clobbered him as, as ooh, 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 Holm goes for the quad and he goes down. Quads into the tough blocks and immediately hits the deck as uh, Holtzy kind of jumping through the tough blocks right there moves up into fourth. So Briscoe, Bob, Joe, Jack, Haley still all knocking on the door. Eduardo Simos and then Holm picks it up just behind Dudu Mutumbino in that uh, seven spot, I think it is right there. 
Jumping off the track behind them, Jack Haley just went down off the right-hand side of the racetrack. Looks like that'll spoil his chances at making it into this main event. So now pressure is on Evan Holt with one lap to go. This time by the white flag will be waving. Timmy Briscoe and Bob Joe going at it for fifth, but they've got to push each other forward and try to get up to Holtzy. Oh, Aww. Bob Joe into the rear end of Briscoe, and down he goes. It's going to come down to the whoops and those two rhythm sections. Holtzy oh. sideways. Down he goes, and Bob oh, and Briscoe's Brisco. going down too. Is Bob going to have it? Is well, he no, up? who just Someone went down? Adam Holm goes by because Simo's got into the back of Holtzy. Coming into the mix as well, Anthony Pachone now knocking on the door as Hall moves back into a transfer spot, but he's looking a little wayward here with a couple turns left to go. He's getting sideways. Holt trying to close the gap back down. This is still not over. Meanwhile, up front, Tharp and Lang have brought this thing all the way down to the very end, and they're going to go on off and take this thing home. It is going to be Tharp winning the LCQ. Lang will pick up second. And then Larson should be third, no problem. So Holm has just got to try to hang on for a couple more turns. And all the chaos that it was, he was seventh starting the final lap. And he's going to break through and go through into the main event. It's going to be P4 for Adam Holm as he comes into the final turn. And he does survive. He gave his spot up in the heat race, but makes it through the LCQ with the final transfer spot. That's crazy. I, I honestly thought there was karma coming back to get him and because of the amount of times that he lost so many positions there. Didn't see that coming, but man, four dudes down in the in one whoop section on the second to last lap, that's going to hurt your chances and you just can't be doing that in a LCQ. Adam Holm though was the one that was able to capitalize on it and ends up getting through after giving away that position like you said. Man, that would have been one of the worst trades if he did not make it through there. Let your teammate in. The worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. But he comes through, and Braden Tharp actually loses a spot to T Lang because he has two point. You're moving. 2.52. 2.51? Two like I, I don't know. Yeah, some 2.5 something to one or penalties one. there for Tharp. So he lost the spot, and yep. that gives T-Lang the W. T-Lang picking up the win in the LCQ. Going with him is Tharp, Larson, and Holm to the main event. Woo! That was one Good heck play. of a race. Woo! And uh, now it's time to go for uh, 250 main event racing is Ploof23 says, Hello, Awood in chat. If that is the Ploof, I think it is. Hello, Ploof. How are you? Good, sir. Uh, great to see you dropping by the stream and giving the support to our man Awood here tonight. We know what's up with that. Ploofy, a fresh man. You, former, former pro dirt bike rider. Hey, 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 we don't need to be giving out names out here, man. Let's keep it tidy. Famous, famous cousin follows me on Twitter. Yeah, I'm chill down. We don't need to be giving cool. out names. Come on, you don't need a name drop. I'm going to call me D Davis because I'm dropping oh, names. Okay, chill down. Uh, all right, 250 go. main event coming up and. Uh, Man, no Johnny Padani in that one, but it seems like it's already starting to come down to Seth Carr versus Rasmus Spalzer for the title. Maxine Vanderbeek looked really good in his heat race. Who you got tonight? I 250 mean, main event win. Don't sleep on Twalik. Okay, I'm not forward. sleeping on Twalik, dude. Don't we're gonna we're gonna bring the we're gonna yeah, bring the gritty for him. Nate Zavorsky guy over here. <laughs> Nate's a war Sleeping guy? on whatever you sleeping on everything. <laughs> wow, you look good. Yeah, what's going on, Ava? I like How your you outfit too. There? I was gonna say you look you look good. Are we look, we're combo. looking like look snacks out here tonight. Shades we got the, on? the Coors Light shades. Do I have any fresh? I wanted some Sorry, I got outfit. no I got no shades. I could run down and get the pit vipers for you if you want. Uh I got nothing. You're just grabbing stuff. What do you got? A t shirt now? Who's on that shirt? San Diego. Oh baby, the oh, legend is himself. This, is this uh is this Gwyn? That's Anthony TG. Keith Gwynn right there, baby. TG, Mr. 394. TG, baby. Back when the Padres were good. Okay. All right. You know what? The sunglasses are coming off for that because the Padres oh. are still good. Okay. <laughs> Better than your angels, at least. <laughs> Let's see what the records say. We got, we got some young bucks. Yeah, but you guys don't have Shohei anymore. I've also, that's okay. He's still going to. I'm gonna be in a San, I'm gonna be in Air, Nevada tomorrow. Nevada. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some bets. Also, we got the Giants represented right here because they misprinted my thing. So shout out to uh, our boy Zachary Dupuis. Dupois. His team. They suck. 
<laughs> oh, brutal. Matt Chapman, too. Just... Dude, uh, Boris is not doing a good no, job. No, Scott Boris is if a moron. If he's my agent, I'm firing him. Yeah, moron. Imagine halfway through spring training, you don't have a team and you won the Cy Young. <laughs> crazy. Should just go back to the Padres. Yes, he should. Good. Team friendly deal. And Blake Snell's also a streamer. So, what t shirt contest? Ooh. Hey, no, I don't think so. We'll get uh, banned on Twitch You're right welcome, quick. Chase B. Hot tub stream. Hot tub stream? We could do it. <sighs> I don't know. Here. If you come to Park City with us, we could. I'll be there. Okay. All right. Oh, let's uh, do oh, one oh, oh, let's do a Okay. Now he wants to show up. We could do it. With- I I was planning on going anyways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The truth is always revealed. That's my birthday. A hot tub cooking stream? Birthday stream. Hot tub cooking stream. And you can only cook with toasters. All right. <laughs> we don't need to cook with toasters. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need no toasters That's up That's all here. I can cook with. I'm oh, a big boy. Guy. <laughs> uh, Andrew Wood. Angels also might win spring training for guess what the third year in a row. Good for them. They're win, not going to the win playoffs. Win the Cactus League. It would <laughs> lose. I need a the Design Lab Co. Whole Shot Award winner: Jeff Cooper, Max Wilczek, Rasmus Balzer, Garrett Hollenbeck, Max Twalik, Jack Mark, Jared Gummison, Joey Carter, Cole Betts, Ryan Chousey, Rogan McIntosh, Austin Partlow, D Mills, Seth Crotty, Alex Zellner, Trent Adams, Jeremy Scalbro, Liam Atkinson, Maxine Vanderbeek, Matt Cromey, Cody Branson. Give me your the Design Lab Co. dot com Whole Shot winner. You know, I think I'm going to go. And I believe in his whole shotting abilities. I think he rides a Kawasaki. I don't even know. What's his name? Austin Pardolo. That's not good. All right. Green. A Wood's picking Austin Pardolo. Don't pick demons. He's scared. I am going to go. I'm going to go Seth Crotty. It's going to. Just go was Boots House 44 LCQ? machine. Yeah, man. He's going to rip a star yeah. from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to make it, brother. He's going to just <laughs> not let off the fuel roll in that first turn. Roll Tide, brother. <laughs> wide, roll Tide. NASCAR, <laughs> baby. Yeah, baby. Keep digging. Be sure to head over to thedesignlabco.com. And check out all their graphics and cool stuff they got over there. All right, folks, it's time for the 250 main event here tonight in Alabama. Who's going to get the whole shot? Who's going to lead us into turn number one? Who's going to win down south? Let's go racing! Throw me with a big jump, but that's way out in the middle. It's gonna Up come the, inside, from the inside, Vanderbeek, Seth Carr's right there. Matt Cromie pushes out. It is going to be Seth Carr by a nose, I don't but Partolo comes out with the early lead and immediately yard sales out from the lead. We got guys oh, getting crossed up. Down. So many guys went down. Adams gets the lead, but there's a ton of riders going down into the second corner. It's Trent Adams leading. From Liam Atkinson, Max Twalik, Jared Gummison, and Max Wilczek on the first lap of the race. That was chaos on the opening lap. Everyone just crashed. Everyone in the whole freaking field just crashed except for Trent Daddy Adams. And he is pulling away. Try to get this early lead and capitalize. Look at that huge gap. Back to about four dudes. Actually, a lot more people made it through than we thought. But Liam Atkinson, Atkinson uh, in second, leading... Uh, Twalik and Gummison as we get down to the rest of the field after a great heat race from him. Let's see if he can keep stacking up these good uh, finishes. Twalik tried to go up the inside though, made a huge bobble. Heavy hitters are buried. Vanderbeek, our heat race winner, is in 10th. The one E of Balzer is in 20th, the winner from Daytona. So this is opening up a huge door of opportunity for a fresh face winner here tonight in Alabama. Adams, a ton of mistakes out front. Doesn't get the rhythm section clean. Here comes Max Chwalik on this TSCZ Productions number 34. The battle for the lead heating up here on the second lap of the race in this freight train of riders coming up from behind right now also going to make things interesting here as we check into lap number three yeah adams with a tiny little bobble there uh, twalik a- able to close up just a little bit and as we're moving on into this whoop section let's see if he's got some send to him it looks like he does gaining a little bit but not enough these guys are pretty even here both getting this triple on too these guys look like uh, some very close competition here 
We see a lot going on right behind them. Crossing up inside. Twilight is going to try to get the on off and oh! they get together oh! and Twilight is down. They're he stays up. up. Adams is going to go back into the race lead as Twilight settles in behind him. Here comes Seth Crotty on the 44 machine also getting into the mix as well and a mistake for Adams. He tries to get back onto the track. Twilight nearly alongside of him in this rhythm section. Who gets it clean? Let's see. Twilight might cut back up underneath. No. Funnels in behind him and Adams continues to lead the race. Yeah, this is great racing here so far with this top five so close right here and so much action all about who's making these little mistakes, who's greasing the rhythm sections, um, all sorts of stuff going here. Look at this up the inside. He's oh. trying to get, poke a nose in there, but that's just how much you can do. If you can cut that corner, you can gain more than the bike length or two in that section, so it's worth it to be close. Adam's losing a lot more time this time through the whoops, and he's going to get past like that little more whoop speed helps him out huge and he's uh seems to be faster through this half of the track right here yeah the whoops really a difference maker there for twalik as he takes over the race lead not going to get the step off and down goes adams in second place he's going to pick it up in about fourth spot is jumping off the track liam atkinson going to lose a spot to seth crotty oh my gosh Whoa. how did they both stay upright right there as they got completely sideways d mills vanderbeek also in the mix suddenly as crotty goes by into the fourth spot adams slips to third as Max Wilczek following Max Twalik. Don't get too crossed up, folks, as Twalik leads the race from Wilczek here on lap number four. And this is a great opportunity for uh, Twalik to finally just put some clean laps in and maybe pull out a little bit of a lead. Yeah, shout out to him. Uh, just kind of fighting the adversity here. And now look at this. He's got a huge gap. Doesn't really have to worry. Just like that, though, one of his strong points, he slides out before the whoops. And that's going to lose a bunch of time. And Wilczek is actually going to gain. Now he's going to be right around one second away. And just like that, he's kind of in the mix. He worked his way up from fourth. Now in second, going to be battling for a lead here soon. Ooh, that quad big it out. Quad in the corner that carries so much time, and he makes the pass right oh, there. Oh, and then goes oh. down, and Twilik hits him. Oh, and Trent Adams clobbers Wilczek as Wilczek was flipping. So Wilczek had the lead for about one fraction of a second. Twilik now leading, and here comes Heat Race winner Maxime Vanderbeek. He's looked really good here tonight, coming from 10th place on the opening lap. Now up in the second place, and this looks like to be where our lead battle will settle in as Vanderbeek puts the heat on Twilik. Seth Crotty also right behind these guys as well. Update on the 1E. Balzer is 16th. He just ran the fastest lap of the race, but he is still buried back there, trying to make amends through the field and salvage some good points here tonight. Yeah, it looks like he's training right behind Chromie there. They're kind of making a move up through the field. Um, man, D-Mills back there too? Come on, get it together. You don't have to worry with all the people. It's always an excuse with him. <laughs> always an excuse. Cade Madley this. He took me out. No. Where is Cade Madley? I just he realized is, I yeah, didn't Cade hear Madley's this Yeah, Cade has gone. I think that's the only reason D-Mills made it through the heat race uh, because he just kills D-Mills every single time he sees him. But <laughs> it's, uh, and I've seen the proof. I've seen the proof. It's there, but... Gotta gotta get yourself away from that, but it can't be going out there and, and being riding around in twelfth emails. You suck. But Vanderbeek here, after a, a good strong heat race, uh, able to to make it through. And Seth Crotty, your whole shot pick, but he's up in third place position here. Maybe I meant main event win for him. I don't know. Either way, man, this is going to be a good fight. Twalik, Vanderbeek, Crotty. Then Seth Carr has now moved up into fourth. Remember, he is right in that championship fight as well in the mm -hmm. 15. Our fastest qualifier coming into tonight, and I think he's about to start laying down the burners. Just went fastest of the front group, 59-2, only five seconds off the lead. Going about a second faster right now than uh, the guys just ahead of him as they start to mix it up with each other. Seems like that battle for second may be intensifying as Vanderbeek still rips the quad to the outside. And no one seems to really be gaining much other than maybe Seth Carr closing in from fourth. Yeah, I don't. I one thing I want to point out too about that step on, step off right before they come back across the start straight. I think that's the first time I've ever seen a step on, step off where people are stepping on and dropping off and purposefully doubling. That's slowing down so much to not get that step off and single out. It's just, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that, just the way that's shaped up. And everyone's doing it, even a bunch of guys in the 450 class. So. Just a weird little thing to, to notice that doesn't really happen too much here in Sim. And yeah, if the if the points, if they finish like this, uh, 
you know, Padani's out of the championship now. Balzer's going to lose so many points. He's going to be way out. Of, he's going to probably be the guy that's six, seven points back. Twalik would take the lead, and Crotty would be right behind him by a point or two. So it's going to be really interesting to see. This is a huge flip. Carr and Twalik are definitely capitalizing um, on this situation here with having a bad run by two of the other guys on the top four in the series. Yeah, Crotty just made a mistake right there in third and allowed Seth Carr into that position. So Twalik continues to lead the race here as we're just about to crest the halfway point and a couple of mistakes right there entering that rhythm section. But it is still Max Twalik leading from Maxime Vanderbeek, Seth Carr, Seth Crotty, and Trent Adams inside the top five. Jack Marcus sixth with Garrett Hollenbeck seventh, Jeff Cooper in eighth, Max Wilczek is now ninth, and Daniel Mills rounding out our top ten. Cody Branson eleventh, Matt Cromie twelfth, Liam Atkinson thirteenth, Rasmus Balzer is still fourteenth place at the halfway point of this race, and Alex Zellner behind him rounds out our top 15 with seven and a half minutes down, and about now just seven minutes left to go on the clock plus a lap in this main event, and that is going to be huge if Balzer can't make a little bit more progress forward. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got he's to gotta do something here soon. It's, I, I mean, even him and Chromie were kind of moving their way through the pack, and they kind of died out in 12th and 14th right now still. So he's going to need to get, I would say, uh, you got to get at least a seventh place or something, try to minimize the damage. But that's, you know, half the race is still left. You got half the race to get seven more spots, get yourself halfway up there. So we'll see what happens here. But man, Twalik's looking great right now, looking like someone who wants to, to win a title here. Um, you know, he's been close so far. These guys have had kind of one good, one bad race, but um, starting to kind of solidify himself and, and put in these consistent good finishes here. He's looking great tonight. Doesn't look like really anyone can touch him with uh, who he's got around him. Yeah, it seems like if anyone's going to upset him, it's going to be himself as he's now 4.6 seconds up on Maxine Vanderbeek. Still running in the 59s. Looks like Seth Carr just had a crash last time by ran his worst lap of the race at a 106.7 and drops to fifth. So Twalik now just steadily opening up that gap slowly but surely and pulling away with the race lead. What is going to happen back here as Carr moves back around uh, looks like Trent Adams has dropped to ninth with a crash. So Carr up into fourth. Jack Mark now in fifth with Jeff Cooper in sixth. Hollenbeck right behind them seventh. Will check eighth. And there is Adams who was just running in the fourth spot. He's dropped all the way back to ninth as Daniel Mills closes in from behind uh, the 63 machine there with just about five minutes left to go on the clock. So Twalik just trying to hit his marks and run consistent laps out front. This is going to give you perspective from his viewpoint on what we're seeing here. And, and Andrew, we're also seeing this is the longest race we've had of the night, how much the track is breaking down because these guys are all kind of sticking to those one main lines. Yeah, I, you can see too uh, with this amazing new update we have where you can see the, the tire marks uh, from these riders. You can see where everyone's using it, the rhythms that are popular. And uh, it's getting worn in a lot. I don't know if it looks different on this track or something, but I feel like this is the most we've seen it kind of break in. But I do like it because you can see where everyone's going. Um, <clears throat> look at everyone taking this rut right here. I love looking at this. Uh, once we get more deeper into the main events, I love going on board um, and watching. I could never play like this, but it really gets a great perspective. And look at how all the way up through the lip of that triple, how much that's broken down. This track is definitely getting harder for these guys to race on. A lot more for them to deal with. Um, man, even on the straightaway right there coming out and then not to mention the whoops as well. Yeah, this is gnarly crazy. what this track has become. A one flat point five for Twalik in and out of the tough blocks and gets up on top of these whoops. They're flattening out so they're a little bit easier to hit and Twalik is really rushing through those things. Vanderbeek at a 101 flat this Ooh. last time by, hopping a little bit in the whoops. Seth Carr now Full back set. up in the third and he is absolutely cooking through the whoops on the left side right there. And that's a rider down. That is a lapped rider. Uh, one of the Cowie riders trying to look back. Might have been Zellner, I think, on the 59 that was down. But uh, Seth Carr, he is trying to do as much damage as he can. And the time he ran last time by a 58.7 was literally a second, no, two and a half seconds faster than Vanderbeek. And yeah, no, th almost three seconds faster than Van Vanderbeek and two and a half seconds faster than Twalik. So Seth Carr is yeah. really cruising right now. 
He's cooking. I mean, when we clicked through the the two guys ahead of him in the whoops and then got back to him, it looked like someone turned it on 1.5 speed. He was just going that much faster than him. If he keeps putting down laps like this, he's going to take that gap and shrink it uh, pretty quickly here. Drops Ooh, who was that? That was Vanderbeek down. And he still goes for the finish. Maybe <laughs> ill-advised, but he somehow stays upright. And now Seth oh, Carr. Trollic. Is that Trollic? No, it is oh, not. It is a lapped rider. Full black bike, though. Threw me for a loop. I think that may have been Joey Carter on the 444 machine who is down. So 59 flat, one flat point three last time by. Only gained about a second. And we're down into the final two and a half minutes plus a lap of this race. So not a lot of time left for Seth Carr to get up to Twalik, but you never know late in this race, Twalik has got to keep it all together and not crash. That is going to be critical. And as I say that, he swaps after the triple. What a weird spot to go down. Twalik tosses the lead away. Will he get up in the lead? He's going to get hit and that's going to There's hurt him Carr. because Carr is going to stay upright. Oh, oh Vanderbeek just went down. Holy tuck the... Rogers Vanderbeek slid down into, uh, I think that was Zellner on the 59 just picking it up. So Vanderbeek picks it up as Jeff Cooper gets there. Oh, now Jeff Cooper hits God. Zellner. Zellner just crashed three times with three different leaders. Oh, my goodness. That's horrible. And, it, I mean, none of them really that, were his fault. That one was for sure Cooper's fault. Yeah. Just, just picked the wrong spot. But, yeah, man, bummer right there. Yeah, Vanderbeek put it down on his own, too. Like, you're you're there. You're not moving into any one spot. They got to be better at avoiding you. But, man, that's crazy right there. That was unbelievable how much that just turned this entire main event upside down. So now Seth Carr leads with a minute and a half left on the clock. Seth Crotty has moved into second, Vanderbeek third, and Twilight, who is leading, I mean, not even a minute ago, is all the way down to fourth. He looks pissed. He looks very aggressive, and he looks really frustrated at what just happened in yeah. the race lead. I mean, the, the thing is about him, too, he, he's the one person we saw there that caused his own crash. And actually, I want to give a shout-out to someone in chat um, that had been saying that Twalik kept cutting bales and he was going to get cuts. And that's one spot he was consistently cutting bales was after the after that triple. And what it, what happened there was he just got into it. And those they do have collision. You can ride through them, but they have probably 20% collision. And you hit them or you hit multiple of them, and it's going to put you on the ground. And that's how he fell on his own in the race lead. So got to stay on the track, and you're just not helping yourself, putting yourself on the ground without anyone doing anything. So... He's going to uh, show some speed here and try to get back up in the lead. Battle for third is on. Vanderbeek and Twilight going at it right now as they find themselves mixed up about 13 seconds off the lead. It's Crotty still just ahead of them by about five seconds. See a Yamaha flash in front of these guys here and there. That is the second position. Car still leads 8.7 seconds here. Coming down to uh, maybe take the white flag. No, he is just not going to get there. In fact, there is only four seconds on the clock when he crossed the line for Seth Carr. So two to go right now. There's Crotty, and then this fight for third is still on between Vanderbeek and Chwalik. Update on the 1E. Rastos Balzer is up to ninth. He's right behind Jack Mark and Max Wilczek in a battle for seventh. But this is a podium spot on the line as Chwalik is trying to salvage what has gone awry from a potential win down the inside on Vanderbeek, and he's going to take back over third place on the 34 machine. Yeah, full send, man. It's It's been really impressive. Uh, we've seen it in the 450 class as well. A couple of riders that do have those whoops just absolutely dialed, and that's a spot where they're able to make so oh. many passes there. Qualic goes down into a lapper. That's Joey the Carter. 444 of Joey Carter. Just trying to get up, and man, that's going to piss him off again. Look at this, Jeff, Jeff Cooper, Cooper coming up, and he's trying to get up. And Which way like do I go? Slamming on the brakes. How do I not hit this guy? That's how I went down earlier. Look uh, at that Twalik just brake check yeah, the lapper. Just went and parked him and gave up a position. Jeez. Maybe going to give up just another one if he keeps spot. doing that. I mean, I don't think that was Carter's fault. Twilight was in the bales coming from off the track, and Carter was just picking it up from a crash. So. Uh, just wrong place, wrong time for both of those guys. But Chwalik really has tossed away a great opportunity here tonight. And instead, taking full advantage now on the final lap of the race is Seth Carr on the 15 machine. And uh, I think he is going to maybe lead the points leaving here based on the way things are going with Rasmus Balzer. What a turnaround for the 15. Yeah, he should be leading the points by my calculations. And just a great ride by Carr. Um you know, I, I do think Cardlo got the whole shot. We got to go look at the tape <laughs> um, at the line. But 
car, man, he's had this reputation with me of, of I go really fast, but I can't keep it together. I can't keep the wheels on the ground, but he's trying to change that narrative this year and coming, I think, with the points lead after this, man. Yeah, puts it all together in Alabama. Seth Carr is your winner in Birmingham in the 250 East Main event as he gets it done. Our fourth different winner, I believe, this year as well, which is unbelievable the way or no excuse to be third because balzer has won two rounds this year but that is our third different winner this year seth crotty with a beautiful second place ride and maxime vanderbeek rounds out the podium he's going to pull some points back critically on rasmus balzer Twalik and balzer gets all the way into the top five on the final lap wow. it's a dog fight with he and wilczek but balzer crosses the line in fifth that could come down to penalties in that position right there hollenbeck was pretty close as well two seconds off and jeff cooper drops Drops to eighth on the last lap. Jack Mark crosses the line ninth. And Matt Cromey will complete our top 10 here tonight. D Mills 11th. Trent Adams, who was leading this race early on, falls all the way to 12th. And Partolo, who was second fastest qualifier, will be the last guy on the lead lap in 13th. Chelsea, McIntosh, Atkinson, Gummison, Branson, Carter, Betts, Zellner, and Schiabro. The running order behind that. I think critically, we got to see what happens to these penalties with Balzer and whether he stays fifth or not. But uh, man, that really actually kind of turned the tides at the end and Balzer does indeed stay fifth after penalties as he holds on to a top five spot when things were going to go so awry. Instead, Seth Carr takes the win and perhaps I believe the points lead leaving Alabama. Yeah, I mean, Balzer moving up into fifth was not what I had. I thought maybe seventh. We checked on him with a lap and a half to go. He was in ninth place. And I was thinking, okay, maybe seventh, he won't have it. But I think Balzer might be able to hold on. I think he was four or five points. So to Twalik and Carr, yeah, so he probably will lose it. But, man, this is going to be so tight up front the way this ended. Twalik, Balzer, and Carr, top five or top three in your championship. And they are now uh, all finished top five in this race. That's just crazy, man. Seth Carr trying to change you know, trying to change the narrative and see if he can be a title contender. It's pretty fun to see this this kind of change happen. He's always one of the fastest guys every time he hits the track. Yeah, this is going to be a fun championship to watch three different winners in four rounds and the points arguably as close as they could be leaving Alabama heading into the Triple Crown at Indianapolis next week. That is certainly also going to give us quite the curveball. Seth Carr gets it done in Alabama wins the main event from Seth Crotty and Maxime Vanderbeek. That is your podium here tonight inside a protective stadium. So Carr and I believe Balzer will be 1-2 in the championship leaving here. Twalik going to be very disappointed to walk away with a fourth place finish when he could have won and maybe also had the championship lead as well and uh, sets us up for quite a championship fight with five rounds to go in 250 East. All right, coming up next is the 450 main event inside of Protective Stadium here in Birmingham, Alabama. Round nine of Moto Options Supercross in MX Simulator. Braden Carter snuck in out of his heat race to get ninth with the help of his teammate Adam Holm. He's got a 40-point championship lead after the first eight rounds. But Braden Castellaneta is coming off of his first career win last week at uh, Daytona the week before that at Arlington Colby Eaglin got his first win of the season we've also seen Alexis Leclerc and Pablo Vial pick up wins along with Braden Carter getting uh, I believe three wins already this year as well so it is uh, a bit of a open bag I feel like in terms of race wins even though Carter has pulled away in this championship now we get to see what happens at the ninth round on one of the more gnarly tracks we've seen this season at Alabama you got to pick for a winner here tonight, Andrew Wood. You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know anything. Hmm. Um, hmm. I think Braden Carter is going to win the race. All right. He thinks Braden Carter is but going to win the race. I don't think he's going to get the whole shot. All right. I, uh, I really want to see Hubbard win. But I think there's too many big lines on this track. I think he's just going to keep going for the five yeah, lap after get, lap after lap after lap and then crash on lap six. I think he can get past lap six. Yeah, me yep. either. Can't make it. Um, um, I'm trying to, trying to vibe out. It's hard because I want someone who got a good gate pick. I feel like there's it's pretty gate dependent here. 
You'd be in that first five or six, unless you you get nasty. But also, not many of these guys can get nasty. So. Also, can't forget Seth Shirley won in Detroit earlier this year, and this is the first 450 main event we've seen him in since then because he technically did make the main at Arlington, gave a spot up to Frank Jackson, uh, did not make the main at Daytona because he was actively trying not to. Is Back in the go? main event here tonight. So Is he going to race? For it though, the whole I way? think so because I think he's finally far enough back from 16th. I don't know for sure. Braden Castle and that Design Lab Co. whole shot. Yeah, let's give That's a shout pick. out to the Design Lab Co. Head over to the designlabco.com. Check out all the cool stuff they've got over there, giving us our whole shot uh, w- winners each week. You got Castellaneta. Am I stupid to not pick Hubbard? I mean, kind of, because last time I think I picked Castaneda and then Hubbard whole shot um, or Luke Sullivan or someone and then Hubbard got it. So. All right, I'll pick uh, I'll pick Jacob Hubbard. We got All two right. Filski and Snowboard KTMs, we believe, Filsky. will go into the first turn in the first position. This is going to be a fun one, though. Hubbard, Blakely, Shirley, LeClaire, Larson, Eagland, uh, Holm, we got Coat, Castellaneta, Sullivan, Turley's out here. Uh, man, the names are a plenty in this one. Tharp, O'Brien, Rockefeller, Jackson, Rogers, Tomich, Carter, Davis, Hall, Lang. How about Tyron Tomich almost winning his heat race here tonight? He's looking pretty good. You think Braden Carter might get a win? We got so many names in this main event. And uh, this is going to be an incredible ninth round of Moto Option Supercross. The first time in Protective Stadium in Alabama. Oh my goodness. We got Hubbard versus Castellaneta for our whole shot picks. But after that, it is anybody's guess who's going to win the main event here tonight in Alabama. It is going to be... Oh, that was almost a sick line from Thomas with the little tire tap. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is going to be a ton of fun. Again, shout out to the designlabcode.com. Uh, head over there, Nick Porter, former pro racer in MX Simulator competition, always given the goods when it comes to some sick graphics that he designs and uh, puts together over there. So uh, head over there, check out what they have to offer, and we appreciate him coming on board this year and uh, helping sponsor the broadcast. Good quality, too. Uh, I, I actually uh, have some all my stickers on my Hydro Flask and stuff. They're from uh, Porter Printed Them, and someone at work the other day is like, hey, these are some uh, really nice stickers here. <laughs> quality, is, quality is nice. What's what's going on? And I was like, yeah. Oh boy. Big uh, quarter. That's my boy. Lab Co. Printed the best. If you're in need of some graphics, any bike, even Stark, who knows? Little kids bikes, wraps, whatever. He's got you. He has got you indeed. Nicholas Prodder. All right. Here we go, folks. Round nine of Moto Option Supercross in Alabama. 20 minutes plus a lap in the main event. And it is going to be so gnarly halfway point of this championship. Will Carter win another or will someone else break through? Here we go. Drop the gate in Alabama. Looks like Hubbard on the 78th got the jump. It's going to be tight with him and LeClaire. LeClaire is going to cut back up underneath. Jacob Hubbard, the Design Lab Co. Whole shot. I picked it. I got it. And Hubbard leads with LeClaire trying to take the lead away from him into the second corner. And Hubbard goes down into the second corner. Couple guys getting stacked up. It's chaos here on the first lap. But it's LeClaire going to the race lead. I mean, look at us. Both, <coughs> both two correct picks. I get two fifties. You get four fifties. And they both suck in the race. Yours <laughs> goes down on the sixth jump. Maybe not the sixth lap, but... What a great start. Is there anyone other than Hubbard that can whole shot? It used to be LeClaire's thing, and Hubbo said, let me take this. You can get second, then I'll give you the lead. But where is Braden Carter? He is back in fifth place. Chase B on the run. Braden Tharp back there. Look at this 450 class. Eight Ooh. dudes in this one rhythm section. That's Eaglin right there in second, trying to pass Ooh. LeClaire for the lead on the first lap. LeClaire holds tidy. Tanner Rogers to the outside of that. Teeling on the five, also in the mix as Carter is inside the top five. Look at how tight it is in that corner. They all kind of stack up. Teeling tripling in from the outside, kind of misses it. Carter's trying to squeeze through. We got almost four bikes side by side coming into this corner. Carter's going to get into fourth, and he's side by side with Teeling. Lang lays it over, and Carter does not on the triple, but Carter's going to make the pass. Sorry, that's Shirley on the two. 
Ah, oh, they, they look so similar with those numbers, but it is Shirley uh, who has slipped back to fourth now, and this is hefty competition at the front because you know Shirley wants to beat Carter. Carter wants to win another main event. LeClaire wants to beat everybody, no matter who he goes up against, and Tanner Rogers is sitting here going, oh my God, what's happening to me as Carter goes down the inside to take over second place? Yeah, man, look at that wolf speed you see there. Just absolutely insane. That's going to be, that's something that you just can't stop. That's that's easily a half second he's got on almost everyone in the field in the whoop section alone. Everyone else going crazy behind him here, but he's on the move. He's looking towards that number one position and trying to take it from Leclerc. Leclerc doesn't have the rut there, but still is able to get that triple, both of them. But Leclerc nails the triple quad triple Ooh. and pulls away from Carter a little bit. I thought Carter was going to short that quad out. Huge shout out, by the way, to Jay-Z38 yeah, gifting five tier one subs. So welcome to the community. Pax GGSS. We also got I4MEJ, V626, Cody Ross, the boss 44, and N Cypher uh, 611. Thank you guys uh, for subbing, even though it wasn't used. So shout out to Jay-Z38. And here we go, folks. It's time to get this battle on in the 450 main event. As Leclerc leads and the old nemesis Carter is back for action. Carter goes down though, tripling. Didn't even quad. He just goes over the bars by himself, <laughs> tripling in second place. So Rogers takes over P2 from Shirley, Eaglin, Tharp, and Carter slips all the way back to seventh behind Sullivan. What a weird crash that was out of the one machine. I feel like he's good for one of those about every two or three rounds, but he's still able to win with it happening. I mean, he did it prior to three minutes into this race. So honestly, he's got so much time to get back up there um, and fix it. He does that right after dropping a 57.0, <laughs> which is easily the fastest lap time we've seen of the night, close to the 56s they were running and qualifying. Look at this though, Seth Shirley pushing up behind Tanner Rogers, who was our heat winner, right? Earlier? I think right? so, yeah. yeah. Barked earlier in his heat. Look at Seth Shirley, though, saying, check out when I'm full-time for Oh, this is man. What you guys are going to have to deal with. Braden Carter, who? I don't care who you <laughs> are. Tanner or Seth uh, Shirley is here to freaking stay. Eagland. Well, we Eagland up the inside, too. Yeah, down the inside, gets around Rogers. Rogers is trying to fight back, but Eagland's going to push to the outside and hold on for third. So now it's Leclerc from Shirley, Eagland, and Rogers as uh, Tharp, Sullivan, Carter, Larson, Tomic, Hubbard make up our top 10 as we currently run. Really critical to get that triple quad, triple through that rhythm section as Rogers keeps it real tidy there right behind Eaglin. Man, Leclerc is just kind of sneaking off with this thing, not even in the picture anymore. As the battle for second about to heat up, I feel like Eaglin's the one really on the move right now. He is putting the heat on the number two ride of Seth Shirley at the moment. Yeah, showing some heat. Eaglin is, it's weird because I feel like he's been just a little bit off this year. But we've seen him. Oh, oh Shirley oh, down. Later, Shirley's dead off the track. Easy pass. Looks like he just dropped the front wheel in the whoops. And when you get start going so fast, these guys are leaning back on the 450s, kind of wheeling. Drop the front wheel in there, and you're just going to explode just like that. Loses a lot of positions here. Comes right back, hits the quad, quad, quad. And he's going to land. Ooh, Ooh almost careful. lands on. Is that, that's that's uh, Larson B. Lars up here yeah, the in the seven seventh spot. Six. The X plus 62. So Carter's now up in the fifth, 58 flat last time by. Of course, that 57 flat still his best lap of the race. He was not the fastest on the track. That was uh, last time by to Leclerc, who ran a 57.6. But Carter is inching up on this fight for second place as Eaglin took it over. But uh, Tanner Rogers knocking on the door, the 55 machine. I'll tell you what, Tanner Rogers, who was a uh, 250 East title contender back in the day, really has come back into his own this year. I feel like this is the old Tanner Rogers shining back through in the 450 class, and he is giving these guys the business right now, battling it out for second place. Brayden Tharp putting the heat on him as well right there in fourth. But uh, how about it for the 55 of Rogers? This is great to see him mixing it up. Yeah, it is. I mean, just sometimes you get a track and, and you know, Tanner Rogers is always up there, right, in the mix, top 10 guy. But sometimes you, you get a track on sim and you just flow. You know, it's it's your night. And, and that's what happens when we get these one-off, you know, one-off race winners 
um, or just guys that you know you're a normal five through ten guy and you come out and get get your first podium or something like that. So really good to see Tanner Rogers just kind of he showed up tonight, man, and he's he's battling Braden Tharp as well has shown speed, had some bad luck in his heat. Uh, look at this, he's letting uh, Braden Carter go by up the inside there. Not a teammate. But, uh, Maybe just didn't want to have to deal with the yeah, heat. <laughs> yeah, when there's, you're getting close to the whoop section, you're not trying to get blown by eighth wide. Oh, no, they're Braden both pretty solid Tharp, in there. Though. Dang, Why are you dude. By? You had him that time. <laughs> oh, boy. A uh, quick shout out to a couple guys, real quick. Motostar 508 subbing. Uh, appreciate that. And Carl Novak also re subbing and <laughs> shouting out Kellen in the chat. <laughs> so, re subbing. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Really, really appreciate it every single week in and week out. As we continue to watch the battle brewing here now for third, Tanner Rogers dealing with the pressure of his teammate, Brayton Carter, closing that gap down. LeClaire, six-second advantage over Eagland. I think LeClaire had a mistake last time by because it was about 10 seconds, now down to six as this battle for third is still raging on. Rogers is trying to hold it on, but Carter is inevitable, man. He just closes those gaps down and makes passes happen. Uh, it's kind of it's just crazy i mean it's it's taken him a long time though to get back from where his crash was he's 10 seconds off the lead now oh my god that's what the, <laughs> it's not it doesn't even look real how do you do that that's what i would look like, like he's floating there. through the whoops like it just the barely he's, tapping he's the suspension be, doesn't even move i don't even i don't understand it Oh, LeClaire was animal. down. Oh, Carter like moves into second. second. Eaglin is now leading the race as the 88 of Aaron Rockefeller is just like, what is happening? I'm about to get the heck out of the way right here because these guys are coming through, but Rockefeller is still going for the Bobby Big Lines, mixing it up with these guys. Carter now into second place, going to start putting the heat on Eaglin out front. Carter with a little bike hump over the triple and goes in and out of those tough blocks. Got to be real careful because we saw how that bit Max Chwalik earlier in the main event. Eaglin a mistake and Carter is going to close right up behind him less than a second in it for the race lead. We're not yet halfway through this main event and it's still heating up out front. It is Eaglin, Carter, Tharp, Sullivan, Leclerc separated by five seconds. Rogers and Shirley also close. Top eight spots less than ten seconds between them. Eight and a half minutes into this main event. That's exactly what we want to see. Mistake for Eaglin. Carter's quadding out into the back of him and pushes him over the berm. Carter takes the lead, but he's off the track, trying to jump back on and jumping into the lead. Maybe is Braden Tharp. Carter inside is going to hold on to the lead, and Carter's out front. Wow, <laughs> it's just it's, everything that this guy does is just insane. I mean, is it's got to be in the in the conversation? Like, is he the best to ever do it? Insane. In Supercross, maybe, because outdoors is a different story. But That's true. I mean, Supercross, yeah. yeah, so good. Is he the king? Uh, he's not there yet. Still hasn't passed Tyson. Still doesn't have four Supercross titles yet. So It's just, it, it's it's almost like some, it's not even like a level of dominance, which he Ooh. has. But and, and he has his own mistakes. It's not that he's perfect, right? He, he goes over the bars on the triple out. Like, just he, he is human. He has these mistakes, but just some of the stuff he does and the speed he has, it's just, I don't know, man. The way, he, the way he plays this game visually is is insane. I don't know. It's impressive for sure. I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, this battle for second is still hot and heavy, though. Tharp tripling in, going for the quad and then triple out, trying to keep it close to Carter. Eaglin made a small bobble and lost some time. Tanner Rogers settling in in the four spot. Riders going down everywhere. Oh, Sully. We check in with him as he noses in and almost goes down. Here comes Seth Shirley, by the way, who has been putting in some solid lap times. Tyron Thomas right behind him just laid in the fastest lap of the race. Well, it was. It was a 56-9. Carter just reset it out front at a 56-7. So this track is still getting faster as we get to the halfway point. But uh, Tyron Thomas, man forsaken so much time off from racing these guys he is mixing it up with these guys no problem yeah tyron Tomich is kind of uh i would even more so than what we kind of mentioned about uh tanner rogers because tanner rogers is kind of up there in the round a little bit more but tyron Tomich it's came to freaking play tonight and he is just absolutely on one and the, the speed is amazing and he, he doesn't look nervous he looks very comfortable um you know it's just this is a great ride by him and a great showing. And, man, when you're battling with Seth Shirley, 
Um, you know, it's it might be a seventh place right now, but honestly, it's it seems like a lot more than that. Um, and this is this is a great ride. He should be really really proud of, of as what he's done tonight, and hopefully keep this rolling and do a couple more rounds. But man, just just an awesome to see him up here uh, going this fast. This fight for fourth is nuts right now. Luke Sullivan is at the front of this group. Then it's Roger Shirley and Tomich over the finish line jump. All of them in the air together, and Leclerc's not that far behind them either. Is through the whoop. Shirley gets a great drive on Rogers down the inside, puts him... I don't even think he touched him. Rogers just decided to exit stage right and go through the Davalos bales. And uh, going through, there goes Hubbard. And Leclerc also went by. Shirley with that nice pass now has Leclerc closing up behind him. And then Tomic just up ahead of that, putting the pressure on Luke Sullivan in what is this great fight for fourth place still just going on right now. Oh, change for the lead. Tharp has gone to the front. Carter went down, I think, at the end of that rhythm section. Just saw it flash on my timing screen that Tharp took over the race lead. That's not a pretty line right there. That is really not pretty. And taking over the lead again is Colby Eaglin. So we're not done yet, folks. We got seven and a half minutes left to go. And it's Eaglin from Tharp and Carter here in the, the main event in Alabama. Oh, Eaglin and Tharp goes down. Second time Tharp's gone down there, I think. I know that was Shirley earlier. Just another rainbow. Eaglin, though, dropping the front, looking like Hanny a little bit. But, oh, man, different lines here. Let's see what happens. Ooh, Look Carter at just off the track. On drop. Carter didn't even really lose some time, though. He might have gained time. <laughs> well, we get those penalties a little bit later on going around those tough blocks. Got to be careful as uh, Eaglin's still going inside triple, but he's going to miss the rest of the rhythm section. Still Carter goes for the quad it. out and gets it. Oh, Carter's still just going double, triple on, off, uh, triple, I think. I think he's playing it safe right there. Uh, Eaglin going for the big line still. So now these guys have nine seconds on the rest of the field, but behind that, it is still close. Nothing in it between Shirley, Tharp, and Sullivan, and really even kind of Hubbard right now, uh, third through sixth. The battle for the lead is on. Just getting whipped in his face is Adam Holm right now. And uh, once again, Carter's got to try to make something happen on Colby Eaglin. These two always say they race pretty respectful with each other. Carter even says uh, Eaglin, after the race when they battle, will always come into their Discord and talk about what happened, and that's really cool to see. So hopefully we get a banger of a main event here, closing down into the final six minutes plus a lap of this race. Carter down the inside shows him a nose. They were almost side by side, but Carter doesn't get over that jump too well. Whoa. And now Eaglin tucks the front end and goes down from the lead. Carter back out front. Hey, yo, Eaglin just kind of comes in at a weird angle. Looks like he, he tried to rush that too much, push that front. Uh, if you lose a front wheel on the rut like that tight, we see them a lot more in uh, outdoors. But if you a rut like that, you you put the front end over, you're gonna go down the second your shoulder hits the ground. So bummer for Eagland after you know going up, getting the race lead and, and battling now, but still able to get up in second place, which is crazy. Surely, let's see how far back Shirley is from him. Eight Not too far. Eight seconds off the lead, but only two and a half seconds back from Eagland. So Shirley. Another podium, though, in his, what, his second, third real full 450 race. <laughs> yeah, second, tried. yeah. So coming in with the win and the podium is kind of crazy. Still going quad over right there and then going to go triple, double, I believe. Yep. Here's Tharp, though, man. Tharp is putting the pressure on the two machine and trying to mix it up and get into this battle for uh, second place because Eaglin's just ahead of them. Seven second lead right now for Carter. And a little mistake right there for Shirley allowed the 23 of Tharp back into the picture. He is right on him into this corner and gets down the inside, makes a nice pass. I think Shirley sensed that it was coming and opened the door just a little bit to make sure he didn't get landed on. But Tharp now moves up back into the third position. Yeah, Tharp just, just barking tonight, really. That's all it is. And I'm, I'm, it's kind of crazy. He had to go through the, through the LCQ solely because of internet issues because he definitely didn't have a speed problem as he's showing right now and man it's just uh maybe a little more track time too could have even helped him you know having to go out there but it's just uh never fun man when you're when you're a podium speed speed wise guy and you're uh you have to go through the lcq just causes a little more stress on the night that you'd like to see tharp getting that step off right there i don't understand why more people aren't doing that i don't know if it's that difficult it looked like you had to try a little bit in the video i saw of you riding the track but 
I don't know. It's just it seems weird that he's kind of crushing it and other people are completely electing not to. Strange update. The second place man in the championship, Alexis Leclerc, who was leading this main event at one point, is now 15th place. He's had an awful string of a few laps. 111.8 last time by. So not sure what's going on with the seven. Uh, but things are going from bad to worse for him as he continues to drop down the order. Uh, Braden Castellaneta also back there. Our winner last week in Daytona having a rough go of it tonight here in Alabama. And Tharp just goes down out of third spot right in front of Seth Shirley. Uh, really tight quarters right there, but Tharp finally hits the deck. Luke Sullivan is going to pick up a position because of it as he sneaks by into fourth place once again. Uh, so those positions continue to change, and now Tharp going to find himself in a battle with the 11 machine. Hubbard also not too far behind these guys. I think he's going to kick himself, albeit other than a few mistakes in this main event, has been pretty solid and still knocking on the door of opportunity to get inside the top five, but running six right now trying to make something happen as this battle brewing ahead of him in fourth place. Yeah, battles are brewing back here, man. It's Look at the way this shapes out. All this stuff can happen. Braden Carter can go down, and it just it all it seems inevitable. It always ends up where he's out, and we're we're looking at battles for five through tenth, and just just finding good battles around the track. But I mean, I mean it's awesome. We get to highlight all these different people. It's just you think something's going to be a little bit different this one race this time around, and, and it's not. But what is different is Luke Sullivan uh, gaining some ground right here, showing some speed, and and he's someone that that we kind of see. Not not fall off, but uh, Ooh, into home. Oh, it goes a little too deep there. Probably should have triple singled there if you're behind someone that close. But whole moving over, letting him continue, saying I'm sorry. But Sullivan, man, I feel like Sullivan and Eagland were were always in the discussion, battling for championships and stuff. And I, in my head, I expect them to be kind of podium top five guys week in week out. And I feel like we haven't seen it too much recently. So. Good to see some resurgence from uh, rides from them kind of tonight. Eaglin, yeah, both inside the top five. Yeah, this is a good ride. For, oh, that was Tharp, I think, just went OTB on that over double out option that he continues to try to do, even though it's not the main line that everyone else is taking. And uh, because of that, I think Sullivan, well, surely just went down in third. So that's going to be Sullivan moving up into a podium position as the two machine picks it yes, up off the sir. ground in the whoops. And Hubbard's now closing up. He's trying to get into fourth as he's right there, still going for the big lines, just behind the two of Seth Shirley. And we're closing down. Time is going to expire in a minute. Shirley, a mistake. Hubbard going to get by and close the door to the inside line to make that pass stick. Yeah, I like that. Just not even letting there be a chance for retaliation, going straight to that inside and not messing around. You go single file twice in a row and gain some time pull away i'm almost wondering i feel like we should check out a little first person action and see what the track's broken down like before we get too deep uh only have 40 seconds left on the clock so probably going to be two yeah two more laps for these yeah guys. two to go i don't know why that took me so long <laughs> Math. But the uh whoop section looked really really flat from these 450 guys that's kind of what reminded me um, it looks like it's breaking down, and if these guys go in this main line here, look at how, but actually it's like if you're not hitting the right spot, they might even be a bigger edge or kicker. Ooh, look at this going options. over, quad, Shirley, Ooh. big lines, framing. Yeah, it didn't quite work out. That, that was, was really close. Terrible. The update in chat is that Shirley himself even said the whoops are getting really, really tough, and uh, I can believe it, man. Those things look notched out as Shirley gets kicked sideways going up that wall jump. So Hubbard fourth, Sullivan third, Eaglin still second, six seconds in, in it's six seconds in it as the white flag waves for Brayden Carter looking for his fourth win, I believe, of 2024. I'm trying to do the math here. So Carter won the opener. They all won the second round. Carter no Leclerc won the third round in San Diego. Then Carter won the fourth round. Shirley won the fifth round. Carter won the sixth round in Arlington? No. No, uh, Eaglin won, then Carter, then Castellaneta, then Carter. So I think this is going to be the fourth win of the year for Carter as he circulates on this final lap of the race. Got Rain Man over here. Getting over the triple jump clean, and Eaglin has dropped 
a lot of time on this last lap. It's opened up pretty substantially. So Braden Carter wasn't the prettiest way of getting there. A couple mistakes halfway through the main event, but he charged back forward and charges his way to victory tonight in Alabama. It's another dub for the defending champion. And he looks like he might be on his way to extending this championship lead over two race distances as we head into the second half of this season. Unbelievable ride for the one. Eaglin ends up in second, 15 seconds down at the flag, and Sullivan crosses only two seconds behind him with a great podium position for the 11. Hubbard gets all the way back to fourth, and Shirley is left to settle with a fifth place finish on the night. Tyron Hell Tomich yeah. climbed all the way to sixth with a good effort on the 83, and Tharp drops back to seventh. Tanner Rogers eighth, and LeClaire does get back into the top ten. He's ninth. He's battling with Frank Jackson. Does this get frisky at the flag? Oh, give it to him. Give it to him. Frank nope. just rips the corner oh. and got pretty close, but it is going to be LeClaire by a nose, one tenth in it. Lang crosses the Holy line in uh, lap time. What's that? Last lap, fifty-six point two by Braden Carter. Oh my God! That's like four tenths faster than his qualifying time. What the hell did he this do? This dude's stupid, ridiculous, stupid, stupid. Just All dumb. right, just dumb, dude. It's so just stupid. Dummy. So Braden Carter takes the dub here tonight in Alabama and sets us on our path for the final nine rounds of this championship. Nine rounds complete. Nine rounds still to go as we have... No, eight rounds to go, I should say. Eight rounds still to go in the championship as we head to Indianapolis next week for the 10th round of the series. All right, back in studio with you guys, Kellen Brower and Andrew Wood, wrapping things up here tonight in Alabama. Braden Carter takes the win in the 450 class. Seth Carr picks up the win in the 250 class. And overall, pretty good night of racing. I think we hope to have the 450 class be a little bit more chaotic down the flag, but I think they provided the goods regardless of which. Yeah, I mean, it's it kind of always seems to happen. At least we, we saw like probably four or five different race leaders during that main event, so... I mean, still got to see some action. It just kind of ended up playing out how you thought it was going to be, at least with who won. But 250 class had some great action. We had, you know, some unique things with uh, guys missing out straight from the heat race and, and getting to see some of that, some good LCQ fights and stuff like that. So overall, a great round. I think this track provided some great racing as well. Um, big, long rhythms were, were interesting to see what everyone was doing. And we got some good racing for sure. Yeah, that was a fun night of racing here in Alabama. Great, great first time, I think, in Alabama for us to see how this racetrack shaped up. And uh, uh, always good to see a new venue on the schedule. And hopefully we get to see a lot of fun action there this weekend for the ninth round of Monster Energy Supercross. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight here inside of Protective Stadium in Birmingham, Alabama for round nine of Moto Options Supercross. Kellen Brower, Andrew Wood in the booth giving you guys the action all night long. Appreciate everyone who subbed tonight. All you guys that uh, followed along, subbed along the way. Very much appreciate the support. Shout out to the Race Factory Gaming track crew as well for another great track and racefactorygaming.com for putting on this series as always. And the Design Lab Co. for giving us our whole shot winners here tonight, which I believe you think it was part of low. It was pretty close on the line with Someone Seth with Carr, demo, I think. So like, I think I got it. Uh, we'll have I to think see. Carr, Carr got the de- uh, I don't know. Uh, but definitely Hubbard in the 450 main event pulled it out and then crashed immediately. Uh, tough break for him, but still ends up fourth in this one. So that's going to do it for us here in Alabama. Join us next week, the Triple Crown at Indianapolis. It's going to be a lot of fun there to see what happens in those three main events. And we'll see you guys at the same time, same place next week, live here on Start Your Systems TV. So long for now.